And uh, this meeting is being recorded. Um, and do we wish to do our little blurb there on uh, um, remote participation? Yes. Sure, I can read that. Um, Okay, hey, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law um, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the North Reading Community Planning Commission is being conducted via remote participation. Um, every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings. Um, a reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so. Um, uh, I'll just say by visiting our website or by calling 301-715-8592, uh, meeting code 985-430000, uh, sorry, 00926. Okay, um, so we have first public hearing doesn't start till eight o'clock. So do we want to look over that A&R, 2729 Burroughs Road? Sure. I have, uh, I have a question yep. on that. Were there supposed to be two sheets to that map? Yes. Oh, I only got, there's only one, there's only one, one sheet. Oh. Only one sheet. That's why it was so confusing. I could find lot yeah, three. I can't one. find you can the only other see lot. The one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, why is there only one? All right, let me see. So which, I just want to make sure I can show you. We got the first one. We didn't get the second sheet. Oh, there's no yeah. sheet two. Okay, let me show you sheet two. I'm going to try to upload it now. I don't know what happened. Um, let me see. Should have asked you that before we started anything else. Oh, no, Forgot. I'm sorry. I didn't sorry. realize it was just the first sheet. Okay, that's okay. No problem. Um, Do you want me to just show it on my screen or do you want me to put it into the share file? Well, at this point, probably why don't you just screen share it, but I don't okay. know if this, this time, you know, I, I read through all of the, the verbiage on it and it looks like a pretty straightforward thing. Yeah. Unless anybody else has got some comments on it. So I think we could probably, if we take a look at it to see, well, basically we're just looking at what's, you know, been designed. So it's a sw an even swap. Okay. You know, um, so it's not like it's a right it's just an even swap with no effect it's not affecting the frontage at right. all so right. um okay let me share my screen oh there are some people who would like to come in let me just admit them okay admit all um okay let me see share screen all right um okay is this the sheet that you've already seen no no okay okay so this just shows so there's just shown under two different sheets this is the parcel a going from um Sorry, this one is going uh, to... Well, we have, we have Luke here. Do you want to have him? Just... Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> if Luke would like to explain it. Sorry, Luke. Sure, yeah. Uh, Luke Roy, LJR Engineering. Uh, that one that you have up that you're sharing is uh, the parcel A that's defined that's going from 29 to 27. Um, if you, you can see where it says proposed lot line. Mm -hmm. to the left side of that parcel A. Uh, and the reason that it was, uh, had to be done in two plans was because 27 boroughs is a uh, registered land and 29 is, is uh, regular recorded land. So the land court didn't want uh, the regular land part of this on, on their plan. So we had to split it up. They fussy, aren't they? Mm. A little bit. <laughs> well, registered land is kind of important. It, it, it has a whole, it has its own, uh, it's a much more secure way of holding it. So, I mean, you, you don't want to oh, make the apples and oranges there. So. Right. No, I understand that. It's just, it's just funny. Okay. Uh, any other comments on this, Luke? I think it's pretty straightforward. 
Yeah, I think so. And you know, certainly here, if there's any questions, but to me, it was uh, where it, it's an equal area swap um, agreed to by the, the two owners, uh, mainly to to clean up a uh, encroachment issue up at the back uh, 29 onto 27 and um, equal area. It's not impacting the frontages. So uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, anybody have any questions from the board here? Okay, uh, hearing none, do we have a motion for this? Well, I have the motions um, that I'm gonna read because... Um, it's two separate motions? Well, no, just um, Debbie sent me the motions and asked if I could upload it into share file, but I didn't do it in time, so. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, see. I move. <laughs> I move that the CPC vote to approve the plan entitled Plan of Land North Reading. I'm sorry. I move that the CPC um, endorse vote to endorse as approval not required the plan of uh, plan entitled Plan of Land North Reading, Massachusetts, dated March 1st, 2021, drawn by LJR Engineering Inc. I so move. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Like a record do we, five do we need to have a roll call on that, Danielle? Is that what they're requiring? You know what? Actually, you do need to do a roll call vote. I'm sorry. You do. Um, okay. Um, Mr. Hayden. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Jeremiah Johnson. Aye. And uh, Mr. Rudloff. You're uh, muted, Dave. Now he's muted. You, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Still don't hear you. Hey, you go. Any better? There we go. <laughs> there you go. Sorry about that, Mr. Chairman. Aye. Uh, okay, and I say aye as well. So that still stays uh, five in favor, no opposed. And thank you, Luke, very much for coming and, and doing the explanation for us. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. Debbie is having a little trouble getting into the meeting, so I'm just going to uh, quickly email her the link. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, just let me know when you're ready. <clears throat> okay, all set. Okay. Um, okay, we can't do that yet. So uh, 303 Main Street, are we all set with that? We can want to vote in a plan endorsement on that? Yes, um, we can vote to endorse that plan and I can read the motion if you'd like. Um, oops. Okay. Um, I move that the CPC vote to endorse the plans entitled Site Plan Building and Park Building Parking and Access Revisions, 303 Maid Street, North Reading, dated February 2nd, uh, 2021, drawn by Williams and Sprages as amended, uh, as amended, well, it's not amended, so <laughs> drawn by Williams and Sprages. <laughs> I still move. Okay, thank you. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Redloff. Is there any further discussion? Any questions on it? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 The record show five in favor, no opposed. Um, uh, we may as well move right along to 239 North Street. Okay, that one is ready. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, if I may, Mr. Sure Pierce. The fire department was happy with the final plan there because I know they kept yes. asking questions. Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. I Mr. Looked, so I looked at these plans tonight and last time we had a discussion with the applicant we were talking about a sidewalk. He did a sidewalk from town hall to the property, but we had also talked about a sidewalk to the Southwest, even though it was gonna end at the state property, get that sidewalk across their frontage. And there isn't one. They, they wanted to complain because they said that there was a drop off in wetlands and they're far enough away from the wetlands. They're much farther than the building is gonna be. They're outside the 12 foot no disturb zone 
there is a drop off, but presently, from what I can tell, the roadway doesn't run to the edge of their property. And from what I'm looking at on their drawings, where North Street is, it's, it's like <coughs> they could have asked permission to use our right of way to build a sidewalk in there. Because, you know, once, it's, once they construct that property, it's going to be hard to get a sidewalk across their property at that point. Uh, I just know, you know, they, they wind and complained about it. We talked, you know, the engineer said, well, there's wetlands there. And then I went and looked on the wetlands maps and I looked on their maps. And I, during the meeting while they were there, I said that there wasn't any discernible wetlands and that they should try and never heard anything back about this. So I'm very concerned why, you know, it's only another, I don't know, a couple hundred feet of sidewalk, not even that. Um, for, for what they take from North Reading daily and weekly, uh, it's, it's a small little bit to give back. All right, do we have anybody representing um, the uh, 239 North Street tonight with us? No, I mean, I could invite, um, I could invite someone to come back in to speak with us. I'm, I'm sorry, when I looked at the plan detail, I, I thought it captured what we had said from their site driveway. It so captured I what Dan had mentioned. And then yeah. I said, let's go the whole length. And the engineer said, well, there's wetlands there. There are no wetlands, well, the wetlands in the immediate the vicinity. Plan. They're seven or eight feet below it to the height of a hundred year flood zone. Yeah, but I think that that's on their land. I think they were thinking about that. I think if we if they built in our layout, then they wouldn't be in the wetlands. I think that was the concern. In our layout, they would be in the wetlands. They would not be in the wetlands. They would not be in the wetlands. Exactly. But if they go yeah. on their own land, they may be in the wetlands. No, there's the, if you look at look at their drawings, Warren, it, that the wetlands doesn't do, do not come up the eight feet from the hundred year flood zone. Hmm. They're in a hundred, maybe in the hundred foot buffer, but their building is within the hundred foot buffer. Almost that entire uh, site they're building on is within a hundred foot buffer. You know, there. I think the elevation, and I could, I could look, but the elevation is seventy nine. I think it's the hundred foot, and I think they'd have to be at about eighty, maybe eighty five. But yeah, you know, they show 85, 86 contour line right up to the side where the sidewalk would be pretty much. Right, right. So it's 86. <clears throat> that's another actually, seven feet. Actually, so, even 87. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a long way to come for, for that. It just, I, I just well, don't, I don't, recall, uh, I don't recall what their response was when we asked them for that. I know they said the wetland thing, but they didn't say. They, they didn't say they wouldn't do it, did they? Did they? What, or did they say they wouldn't? Do it? They so didn't I, agree to do it. They didn't. Yeah, but what I recall is they said in, inappropriately, we can't pave on the state's property. But I think the way Chris had left it was, well, we'd like you to at least to do your property up to that line. I do recall that. Thank you, David. Yeah, no, I mean, I know that you asked, but I don't think that they agreed. They only agreed to do it from their driveway. I thought. Like it was, year. yeah, it was kind of like they didn't, after I said that, they didn't give an answer and there was never any more discussion about it. It just kind of went into the vapor, the ether. You know, this is our one shot to get anything done on this property, right? You know, it, it wetlands aside, there, there really no wetlands that they're going to affect out there. Other than they're no, going to have to, they're going to have to change where their uh, their Marafi fence goes. Well, we're going to have to decide. Well, if we want to pursue this, then we're going to have to put this vote off and see what uh, see about uh, getting them back in. And, Could you do it as conditional, <laughs> the approval with condition of the? Uh, I, yeah, you know, this is a this needs this is a site plan, right? Yeah, but the conditional approval describes where the sidewalk goes, and we didn't vote to make them do that. I, I just, I don't think that we're going to be able to do that at this point. I, I'm sorry, I thought that that's what I just... I thought we had that in the conditional approval, okay. I mean, I can pull it up and see how it's worded. I just, I don't, I just, I don't think they agreed to that. Um, 
Well, I remember you asking for it, Chris, and then and then pushing back on it. But then I thought they said, "Well, we don't, you know, we can put a sidewalk in." I thought they agreed to do it. I did too. I thought they just pushed back on the state thing, or they were just making it clear that hey, they could only go so far. Cause yeah, it's exactly. the state property, and I and, and, and I, I agreed with them on that. You know, I you know they can't go pave over that, but right. Yeah. I did. I did recall they would go up to their. It's line. already yeah. It's dirt there now. People can walk across the state property. You know, yeah, it's just. But I, I, I thought that they really thought that was that was no big deal. Um, and that's that, what I uh, thought too, and it's just not included. Of, so I kind of expected it to be, you know, in there, but I didn't really look for it. I, I had thought that they were saying no, but I mean, I can, I can speak to them. I, you know, I, I can, I can call them tomorrow and and ask them if you know they would. Uh, consider going for it. now. What was what was the end point that we were hoping to? To the southwest corner the of their property, yeah. right to the state land. You know that the and, and it may be in the it, they may be in North Reading's layout, but it's not hard to get permission from North Reading to put a sidewalk in there because we're not going to have a street on Massachusetts property. We traditionally, over the years, have had many contractors do offsite improvements. This is not absolutely. Big no, of Absolutely. course not. But we just want to be clear that, with them that that's what we were asking for. Um, yeah. So the plan. Okay. The plan you're referencing in, in the in the draft conditional approval does not. In, in the, uh, uh, do we, we already vote to approve this? Yeah. Yeah. This is just the endorsement. I mean, I can. Yeah, we already. I on. think we already voted to approve this, Chris. So. Yeah. So uh, we may. Problem be... is when we don't have plans and we do an a. Uh, 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 yes, I, you know, it, with, it's with you can't match them up. Thing, yeah. Yeah. So maybe we're gonna not do that anymore. Um, if they can't get their plans done, then they're gonna have to wait for their approvals. Period. You know, because um, you can't. I can't look at read one thing and then look at the other. Uh, thing. Let's do this. I mean, I I think we kind of got a, we're kind of in a trap here, but I don't want to give this up either. Mm -hmm. So uh, perhaps uh, what we could do is Danielle, maybe you could give them a call tomorrow sure. and see if they'd be willing to do that extra sidewalk, and yeah. tell them that we'd let them work in the layout, and we'll we'll take care of all the arrangements if, as long as they'll do the building of it. Okay. Okay. I mean that's that's I mean that's the only fair thing we can do since we already approved the plan. Yeah. Well, so, and, and I I think again, we, I, I offered that we'd help either. them out. Yeah. So from the southwest corner of their property. To I the thought state. they had. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. You. I was just giving you the other end, which would be go the ahead. state property. Yeah. Okay. From that new driveway they got coming into the state property, yeah, the southwest. The property. Yeah. yeah. So they would have a sidewalk that can, goes continuously across their property and then dead ends at the state property. But well, we know that is, some you point- you look at it from the other way, anybody, anybody that wants to walk, once they cross the state property will be on a safe sidewalk all the way to 20. That's right. And you, that's exactly what you said, Warren. Yes. That, that state property right now, you can walk across that almost See, the entire- that they agreed to, I thought they agreed to do it. I think that's what Dave that they said. I, I, yeah. I I think they said, yeah, well, when we said, yeah, you could just, you know, put it in there. And, and they said, well, okay. They didn't think it was a big deal. And that's, that's what it was, you know, Yeah. Okay, not I'll, being able, go ahead. No, I can, I can contact them tomorrow and um, say, I'll just let them know that when you looked at the plans for endorsement, um, the, that wasn't your understanding of the sidewalk extent. And you'd like to see it from, you know, from this, from, Southwest corner of their property. To the, to the state, state property. property. Yeah. Right. Okay. The, the driveway to the state property. And, you know, when we were talking about it, Warren, I, I said that we would help them get permission to work on in the North Reading layout because it's done all the time. We just asked DPW and the DPW doesn't have a problem with it. As long as yeah. there's no road in it, you know, and yeah. there's no road there because you can't have a road jogging around the state property. It doesn't drive through the state property. We know that. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, do we want to uh, put this off? I mean, I don't know that we could legitimately do that, but I'd know. like to put it off. I mean, you know, yeah, you're right. Maybe I can't do it, but we can't for a week or two. I mean, 
mean, I don't think the endorsement of the plans, it's not like a subdivision where it really has to be endorsed. That's really kind of our choice. Um, I don't have to withhold anything like, a you know, sign off on a building permit over it. It's, um, you know, if you would like okay, to. Okay, uh, well, let's do this then. Let's pass on endorsing that plan okay. tonight. Okay. Let's pass on it and then we'll just say, well, you know, this doesn't look the way we thought it was going to look, and then you can see what you can do with them and see if they'll put it back on. And if they were, will, then at the next meeting, we'll endorse it. How's that? Okay. I agree with that. Okay Thank with you. That? Yes. Brian, okay. you good? Jeremiah? Okay. okay. I'm Dave? sorry, can I ask? Okay, just one clarifying question, because I'm actually looking at the plan right now, and I just want to be sure I understand. I see where the sidewalk runs from the, from the site driveway up to match up with the town hall property. So the, it would be on from the other side also of that driveway extending down until they hit. Okay, I see it, I see it. All the right. state corner. Yeah, okay, yeah. just that other half. Okay, I got yes. it. Yes. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Got it. Okay. So uh, we'll put that off and um, to our next meeting, okay? Okay. And uh, again, since, um, um, thank you for the clarification on that, Danielle. That helps make the decision. Okay. Knowing, knowing that we're not under, really under a gun on that. So, but no, it's and way, I, it's, it's a way of expressing our displeasure with what we got served with. So, <laughs> okay. And I, you know, I won't, I won't withhold, you know, any signatures on, you know, routing slips for beginning right, the right. work. I just think that we should, right? I mean, unless you want me to. No, no. Okay. Okay. No, that's not, I mean, they can work in the back of the site. They're not going to affect the front. Yeah. And they're going to do, they're not going to do finished paving until everything else is done. Right. Okay. So that means we could, uh, um, hopefully they'll, they'll acquiesce to it and we'll be fine. So. Okay. Okay. I'll stay with them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you still got about five minutes. Do you do we want uh, do we want to talk about ninety two Concord Street? I don't know. Yes. We have a lot to discuss there. We just because it's really basically. I don't know if you want to give an overview of it, uh, Danielle. But sure. has everybody read their read the the package? Yeah, we talked about this last year too. I think. At yeah, some well, the point. building inspector. The, you know, if, if everybody's read their their uh, their uh, share file, then we should. Uh, Go ahead, Danielle, just give a quick overview. So. Sure, so um, the building inspector has been concerned about some uh, you know, zoning and building code um, violations on that property. And um, you know, this is something that we have spoken about before. Um, there are also you know, instances of not complying with their site plan. So um, the building inspector has been working with town council on this and asked me if I, you know, would just document what all the instances of, you know, non-compliance with the uh, site plan were, and he's going to be enforcing everything together. So, um, you know, looking at the site, there were really uh, quite a few things that were not done, or maybe they had been done at one point, but are now changed, um, you know, storage on the site that had not been approved as part of their site plan. Um, relocation of dumpster, not marking pavement areas, removal of parking spaces, all kinds of things. So um, I just wanted you to be aware of it. And Jerry wanted you to be aware of it too, that um, that I was um, working with him on, on that and that he was you know, seeking to enforce a, a number of things, including those. Yeah, so basically what this is, is this is a discussion to, uh, just to inform us of what's going on. And of course the building inspector is our enforcement uh, uh, officer. So. <clears throat> so, so just so we know what's going on uh, with that site, and that uh, the building inspector is uh, following up on it to make sure that these things get done. Um, not sure why we, how we. I'm not really sure how they got a occupancy permit without everything being signed off. I don't know, but they had had it for many years. Um, Oh, it's not that many years. Well, what do you think? Hello. Did this one slip through the cracks to to a to a time when it we wasn't it wasn't us, Warren. We we approved the uh, we approved it in two thousand. What was it six? Six, yeah. Yeah, and and then it left us. It was the building inspector, I think. I mean, now we would no, get we a sign off. To take a, we have to take a look. We have to do a sign off. 
for the occupancy yeah but that yeah. was back in you know 2006 and i don't know if it because happened so. when we didn't have a planning administrator and i was filling in the position there i that's what i had to do i had to go out and, and do final inspections and sign offs to make sure everything was right so right and it was probably in binder at the time and everything was was right at the time for there no no it couldn't have just been in binder because it wouldn't have that wouldn't have met the control the requirements mm. somehow the ball that dropped there i would say yeah i have the whole sidewalk missing unless they put it in and took it back out <laughs> no it just wasn't finished i mean inside there were some pretty substantial things having to do with safety building code violations that were just never done that should have been done so i mean it, the whole site is kind of an issue well he's on it now so i imagine that he'll uh, follow through on it so. anybody have any questions on that or what's going on there okay um I don't think we uh, want to get into the 5G unless you got, we have, what do we have on 5G? Anything new or? Yeah, I have, um, so I, I do, but it's, it is a longer discussion and I can, I mean, if you want to wait until after the public hearings, I can definitely update you. I, what I wanted to discuss with you was um, a recommendation to be made to the select board for a policy and oh, yeah, just um, a zoning yeah. amendment. And yeah. I just kind of wanted to go through it. Um, okay. Talk about those things. We'll do that a little later on then, because I guess we're pretty much there for our 8 p.m. Yeah. So we can uh, look at the 148, 150 Park Street rezone. It's a public hearing, a continued public hearing uh, for 8 p.m. Um, so so it's, I think we're just opening it. So would we, um, I, it's a zoning hearing for... Oh, this uh, is the actual, oh, okay, yeah, for the zoning. Oh, okay, the rezone, okay. Right. Um, okay, do we do we want to read a public hearing notice? Do you want me to read the legal notice? Yeah. I can do that. Um, okay, grab it. Okay. We've had a number of discussions on this, so I feel like we're, you know... Right. We've had many workshop discussions on this. Um, yes, it feels like we've already been doing this for years. <laughs> okay, let me just. Um, Uh, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 5, the Community Planning Commission of the Town of North Reading, Mass, will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, April 6, 2021, commencing at 8 p.m. via Zoom, a virtual meeting, um, the access information is given. Um, the purpose of the public hearing is to provide interested parties the opportunity to comment on a proposed amendment to the North Reading Zoning Bylaw, which has been submitted to the 2021 annual town meeting as follows. Add Article uh, 27, Senior Housing Overlay District to the North Reading Zoning Bylaw to allow for the creation of age-restricted housing by special permit with the requirement that 15% of the age-restricted housing units be affordable units and to allow for a local preference as to the sale of affordable units to the extent approved by the state and to amend the zoning map to place properties known as 146, 148, and 150 Park Street, North Reading Assessor's Map, 54, lots 123, 124, and 125 in that senior housing overlay district. The amendment also proposes the following related housekeeping changes to the zoning bylaw, adding this new special permit to the list of special permits for which the Community Planning Commission is the special permit granting authority and updating the revision date of the zoning map. A complete copy of the text of the proposed amendment to the North Reading zoning bylaw is on file with the town clerk and is available for public inspection on the town of North Reading website um, on the Community Planning Commission's um, webpage under zoning amendments. And in the Community Planning Commission office, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Friday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., and by appointment only, uh, the phone number is given for the planning office um, to call for an appointment. Uh, advertised March 18th and 25th, 2021 in the North Reading transcript. Okay. Um, so uh, I see we have Bruce. Bruce, who's doing, uh, we'll do your presentation tonight. Uh, Chris is going to get us started, Warren. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, I, if you want, Chris, I, Chris and I had spoken a little bit before. I, I can start just by giving a quick summary. Um, and then uh, if you'd like. Um, so this is a, um, a the, the, the proposal um, would be to allow for uh, multifamily residential um, in the local business district, which d does not um, normally allow that. This would be an overlay that would be over these three properties that would allow for that. Um, this, uh, the zoning was designed specifically to accommodate a particular project um, that Mr. Wheeler has in mind for his properties. And the yield of that would be, um, it would be a maximum of 50 units. Um, and there is an affordability provision with, um, uh, there would be eight affordable units and the affordable units would be in perpetuity and they would be on the site. Um, the project is proposed as uh, 55 and older. Uh, so at least one occupant of each of the units would need to be 55 and older. Um, it's a zoning district covering four acres over three parcels. Um, and this would be just for residences and not for a nursing home or hospital. Um, it does have a mixed use component in the zoning if allowed by the CPC um, because Mr. Wheeler's office would be remaining um, on the site. And um, we have had several um, informal workshops um, and the, I know that the applicant has presented their plans um, before uh, several other town boards. Um, they do need to uh, have permission from the Historic District Commission. Um, and this is a project that, um, you know, after they developed, you know, the CPC had decided uh, that they would like to uh, sponsor a town meeting. Um, it does relate closely to recommendations made both in uh, the, the town's uh, housing production plan and in the, in the community master plan, um, most specifically the need for um, affordable senior housing. So I didn't know if, uh, Mr. Latham wanted to add any more to that, or if there were questions about it that that he or his uh, you know team could answer. If you don't mind, um, I'll just quickly go over it. Although Danielle did a great job uh, summarizing it, so the proposed senior housing overlay district is consistent with the master plan and the town's housing production plan and serves a public purpose. It provides senior housing, uh, which is a noted objective of the town. It provides a net increase in affordable housing, also a town objective, provides a greater diversity of housing, which is also a town objective, revitalizes the town center, likewise a town objective, and it's compatible with the area. The overlay district is a genuine public benefit uh, to several specifically identified public needs. And we have presented this, obviously we've been working with CPC on this for quite a while. We've appeared uh, before the uh, Historic District Commission at least twice. We've appeared twice before the Finance uh, Committee. And um, the Senior Housing Overlay District is a tool to address some of the serious demographic issues that are facing North Reading. Um, as well as give North Reading seniors more housing options via a special permit procedure through CPC as part of a site plan review process. It's a proposal, it's an overlay district like many other overlay districts in town. Um, it's, it's designed, as, as Danielle said, with three uh, warrant articles. The overlay district before you was drafted using applicable definitions under state, federal law, Commonwealth smart growth models and good land use criteria to, seek to provide independent housing units for seniors over the age of 55, allow aging North Reading seniors options to downsize and remain in town, simultaneously revitalize the downtown and preserve the character of the town. To achieve these objectives, the overlay is designed uh, as a senior housing project that must consist of four or more acres of land within walking distance, 250 feet, of a public park, public common, or public library, at least have 250 feet of frontage, um, and specifically is 146, 148, and 150 Park Street, which consists of three separate lots. Um, it allows for multiple buildings, including mixed use in a senior housing project, uh, so long as all principal buildings have a minimum site distance of 20 feet between buildings. The buildings do not cover more than 40% of the gross site area. New buildings for senior housing have setbacks of 25 feet from the front lot line, 20 feet from the side lot line, 20 feet from the rear lot line, maximum height of 45 feet. And the project have minimum open space of at least 20% of the total site area. Uh, and new buildings must be in harmony in design with the neighborhood, including use of peaked roofs and end gables. A senior housing project must also have on-site senior common area amenity for the use of senior residents 
elevators for all new uh, multi-floored residential structures, which must also have handicap access from parking garages to dwelling units. Density would be uh, limited so that a dwelling unit cannot, cannot have more than two bedrooms and the total number of dwelling units in a senior housing project does not exceed 50 dwelling units. In addition, the applicant for senior housing development must contribute to the stock of the town's affordable um, home ownership units equal to 15% of the market rate residential units. Importantly, the affordable units must be located in the project. They cannot be located off site and they are to be consistent with Commonwealth's uh, inclusionary zoning uh, model bylaw, subject to the affordable housing restrictions and the bylaws and the DHCD regulations. And these affordable units would be in perpetuity. Um, so with that being said, uh, we request that uh, the CPC, um, who is decided has voted to sponsor this project, we request that they also um, issue a favorable report to the town meeting. And if you folks have any questions at all, we're, we're here and ready and willing to address your questions tonight. Do you have questions? Okay, oh. okay um, so um, are we gonna do a continuing presentation for everybody to picture with the pictures and all that? You want me to uh, screen share so that people can see where it is? We're actually. Well, I think probably since this oh. is the beginning of the public hearing, we really need to. I mean, we we kind of we've seen a lot of it, but a lot, a lot of other people that are here tonight may not have, so we really need to do the whole thing. So. Okay. The same as we would if we were at a meeting. So. Um. Krista, do you want to share the... Sure, the I, I can share some screens are you, if you don't mind. Oh, are you able to... Yep, I can give it a shot. You ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, can you folks see my screen? Yeah. All right, so... This is the uh, this is the body of the zoning bylaw, and it's uh, as Danielle says, it's basically on the town's website in full. If somebody wants to read it, it's also been published uh, public notice in the newspaper. Um, in terms of the zoning plan itself, hopefully everybody can see that. Can you can you folks see the zoning? Yes. Okay. So that's basically the uh, dimensions uh, and the location. Um, and I can give some additional uh, plans as well, if you'd like. Um, let's see. Okay. Linda Boniface, 136 Park Street. Well, uh, hold on, let him finish doing his presentation and we'll do public input in a little bit. Perfect. Can you folks see this plan that basically shows the um, basically three lots that this property consists of? Yep. Okay. So so basically that's that's the location of the zoning district in question. And as I said, it's consistent with the town's master plan, and it's consistent with the housing production plan that the town has uh, produced. And in terms of the project itself. Uh, this is the location uh, from an aerial view. All right, so everybody can see that. The library is here. Oh, not yet. Look, no, over, to, that. look over to the map. Okay. Let me see. Let me share this. You may have to change programs in your screen share. Yeah. Minimize. Me. If I stop sharing, maybe I can then uh, go over okay. to the portion. Okay. Okay. No. All right. You folks see the aerial view? There you go. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So obviously over here we have the public safety fire department and police department. We have the library over here. We have the town common over here. And and this is the, the property here. Okay, so the plans that I showed basically show this, this property right here. Okay, 
Um, so that that's in terms of the overlay district in terms of uh, some plans and, th and this is the current an example of what the current use is um, and historically um, this is what was there before um, and so it, it covered a good portion of the factory back in the day um, this is what is being proposed basically the um, the structure uh, historic fr structure on the front would be moved. Sure. Can you I don't think you can see that. Can you see the rest? You just still see the aerial. Oh, all right. This is going to have to be point by point then. Okay. Sorry. All right. So. All right. So, you folks, can you see the, uh, the rendering here? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can see the rendering yeah. now. Okay, great. So, um, there's the historic McLean House. Uh, the proposal is to uh, move the historic McLean house so that basically it can put be put on a permanent foundation. Right now it has a rubble rock foundation and that is uh, potentially not viable uh, for the long term. Uh, also, it's going to be moved in such a way that it would increase site distance going up 62. Um, this would be the proposed uh, housing for 55 and over. Um, and hope, let me see if this works. Okay. Um, okay. Can you folks see this other rendering as well? Yes. Yes. All right, so this is obviously the, the library over here in the island. There's the historic uh, McLean house here. And then starting here, this would be the end that would be facing the street. And the, the other 55 housing would be coming back this way. So just, just so we're clear, this is basically a zoning bylaw uh, overlay district. And this is the currently discussed proposed project. But just realize they're both a little bit we're getting ahead of ourselves by basically going in the architectural renderings because it still has to go through site plan review. It still has to be approved by uh, historic district commission. So. Okay. So tonight actually what we're working on is the uh, rezoning. And um, so what Chris has given us here is, is a, uh, and Danielle has given us is an overview of what the intent of this the reason for the rezone, but tonight that's uh, basically um, we're talking about doing the rezoning. Any questions from the board? You can uh, you can stop your screen share, Chris, so we can uh, see. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board at this time? I know we've seen a lot of this already, so we're pretty, we're kind of up to speed on it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do then, since this is a public hearing, I'm gonna open it to the public. And um, uh, please uh, state your name and address and, and uh, direct all questions to the chair. So does anybody have a comment or a question on this project? Mm -hmm. Uh, Linda Boniface, 136 Park Street. Um, okay. it, it, it seems very, very, very good right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We, uh, we have a lot of experience with Bruce working in town. He's done some really nice work for us. Um, and so we expect the same from this project. So. How long do you think the project is going to take as we are our butters and we do a lot of yard, like being outside in the yard, et cetera? Sure, sure. I don't know if uh, if, Wendy can, if anybody of the people can actually answer that. Do you have an idea, Bruce? Yeah, well, the, the construction uh, uh, time frame would be, would be 12 months to construct the building. But uh, from a construction standpoint, I think the permitting process, uh, uh, assuming we, we complete the um, 
at going over the, the permit process would be um, six to eight months after that. Um, and then we would probably be looking at uh, if, if everything um, uh, and smoothly, we would be looking at beginning construction in the uh, late spring uh, or early summer of 2022, and it would be a year of uh, uh, construction um, uh, contract. Okay, did you hear all that? I did, and, it, okay. and I'm just, as, as an abutter there in my backyard, I'm just, you know, concerned about the construction and the time element, what time it starts, finishes, and how would it impact me as as a neighbor, a butter? We would comply to all of the um, uh, the time constraints, work time constraints within the town for beginning and ending work and uh, and finishing work, um, and uh, uh, it, 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 yeah it. It's a very focused schedule. Uh, the the twelve-month schedule is um, uh, uh, is there's a lot of detail uh, in that. And uh, um, uh, working within the, the town's time guidelines, uh, that's how long uh, we're shortly going to be preparing a. Uh, screening and buffer planting uh, for the eastern side of the building, uh, which uh, which I'll be sharing uh, with uh, uh, the the neighbors and abutters to that side, and be looking for uh, for feedback um, uh, with regard to that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, and thank you very much for your questions. Okay, anybody else uh, have any questions or comments? Uh, yes, I'm Carmen Petrosino. I'm a butter directly uh, to the left as you look from the uh, street. And uh, as far as rezoning goes or, or the special permit for zoning, um, I think this is a no-brainer. What Bruce is, uh, um, what he's put forth, I think would be great for the center of the town, much better than what's there now. And um, I have no issues with it. He was uh, kind enough to reach out to see what my concerns were. Uh, we spoke, and um, I feel confident that uh, moving forward, he will uh, address those concerns and um, do his best to uh, to do what's right for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmine. Okay, anyone else have any questions or comments? Okay, yes, Vincenzo. Um, I, and, and again, I'm asking this question as capacity as liaison to the select board. Um, at some point, maybe between now and the town meeting, um, I know, Bruce, you said that there were some environmental, uh, I think, phase one, phase two studies done. I believe you, if I'm correct. Yes. If that, um, if maybe at some point after the article presentation, uh, maybe you could present that to the select board because we do have a number of people asking about the environmental impact. So... You know, yeah, whatever the forum is, but they're going to, they, they, there's quite a few people who are going to have questions on it. Vincenzo, uh, to get the ball rolling with that, I can send you the reports tomorrow and I will request time on the next selectman's meeting so that you guys can have the reports ahead of time. I don't want to just come and present it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you and I will include in the email, I'll CC the consultant that is his email address that um, that did the environmental study, so that we can have uh, a, a complete dialogue um, uh, with regard to um, uh, with regard to the findings. Um, so, as a mini summary, as a mini summary, I'll say that uh, uh, the site. Is is very clean, and we we went into it expecting um, very very clean relative to um, the, the the history of the wagon factory and the Turner truck, and and, uh, uh, and, and, and just being this this more 
this historic industrial uh, location. Um, uh, but we did a phase two and a phase, we did a phase one and a phase two study. Um, and those were all conditions upon our financing and our closing. Uh, so it wasn't just a simple phase one, it was actually a very elaborate phase two study. Uh, but I will, I will send you um, mm -hmm. all of that tomorrow so that you have it for the board and um, uh, I'll communicate with the town administrator's office about getting um, time at the, at the next uh, selectman's meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and again, it just uh, because, yeah, I, I, I agree. You, you said that some things were already all said. It just that, you know, just so other other people can uh, see it in the community who have, uh, you know, especially with the Ipswich River, it's kind of a sensitivity point. So that's why I think it's nice to hear it from you. So agreed. We want to get uh, we want we want the information out yeah, and yeah. Um, uh, and, and shared with people. And then we want to have a dialogue to answer and address questions and concerns uh, so that everyone has um, a, a thorough and complete understanding of what was done and what was found. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hood. Thank you, Chair Pierce. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Any, uh, any further discussion on it? Okay. Um, before I close the public here, uh, public portion of this, uh, Meeting, Danielle, do we, um, um, I would assume we have a motion for tonight on this? Uh, you're muted, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, uh, yes, I can, I can read that um, if you would like. Um, and this is if you decide that you, um, uh, this would be a motion to recommend the article to town meeting, um, which right. you can do or not. Um, okay, well, before you do that, I need to close the public hearing. So uh, I just want to make sure there's no more questions from the public on this. And if it appears that there isn't, then I will close the public portion of this hearing and we can move on to uh, a motion. When you're ready, Danielle. I move that the CPC vote to support the change in the map amendment at the June 2021 town meeting. Um, I so move. Second. That Dave, that's your whole motion. Okay, I just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, there's really no. I mean, th yeah, there's, there's another no, part of it. No, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, there's so, nothing else to. Okay. To do unless you wanted to submit a report. There's no other. No. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Roll, roll, roll call, Warren. On a roll call. Okay, Mr. Hayden. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Redlock? Aye. And I say aye, so um, that's five in favor, no opposed. <clears throat> I do have a, a question for uh, Mr. Wheeler. Okay, if he could ahead. also send that report to uh, Danielle so we could see it. You bet. I'll Thank you, sir. Good. Then, Good. Vincenzo. Chair Pierce. Um, and then uh, I just wanted to confirm that uh, um, someone from the CPC will be there to just uh, give a little summary of the article you're sponsoring to the select board, if possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think it was customary, but I'm new to it. So I just, I'd rather ask yeah. them. No, yes. we, no, if, we, if we sponsor an article, we have to go there and okay. present Thank you. To, the, to the board. So, um, okay. Um, Okay, let's see here. Go back to uh, my agenda. 412 14. Yeah, well, I'm just uh, following on my iPad all of the, every, all these stuff here. Okay, so uh, I should... uh, public hearing is going to be 412 14 Clockett Street rezone. So I think um, Jill Man let me know that she might be writing minutes late because she has another uh, meeting just finishing up. So if you'd like, what we can do is um, the other zoning amendment, which is also scheduled for an 815 public hearing, which is just a simple map revision date. Okay. All right. 
Oh, here she is, actually. I'm just letting Jill in right now. Perfect timing. Hey, Jill, you can unmute yourself so we can hear you. Ta -da. There you go. There you go. <laughs> did I, did I, it was really perfect timing. I'm, I'm thrilled because yeah, I yeah, was we just, sweating. We just sweating. <laughs> The 412 and 14 Clark Street rezone. Good evening. Jill, would you like me to um, share my screen so that I can show you the plans and have them up at the same time, Danielle, or do you have them? No, that would oh, be- if you, can, if you would like to screen share, you can do that. Um, I can also, I think as we open this up, I was gonna read the public hearing notice. Sure. You have that? Yes, okay. okay. All right, go ahead. In accordance with the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 5, and Section 200-30 of the Town of North Reading Zoning Bylaw, the North Reading Community Planning Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on April 6, 2021 at 8.15 p.m. The purpose of the public hearing is to provide interested parties with an opportunity to comment on a proposed amendment to the North Reading Zoning Bylaw and Zoning Map. The proposed amendment is as follows. Amend the North Reading zoning map by changing the zoning designation of three parcels of land located on, the, on Concord Street from the Residence A RA zoning district to Industrial Office zoning district. The parcels are specifically identified as follows. 14 Concord Street, map 18, parcel 15, 14.1 acres. 12 Concord Street, map 18, parcel 14, uh, 0.92 acres. And four Concord Street, map 18, parcel 13, 0.92 acres. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, the meeting of the Community Planning Commission will be conducted via remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting. To participate by video, um, visit, and I will give the Zoom information, which is on the website, as well as the phone number. Um, a complete text of the citizen's petition that includes a description of the foregoing amendment and a map showing the location of the above referenced parcels of land and the surrounding zoning districts is available online on the community planning um, pages under zoning amendments and is also on file um, in the CPO, oh, sorry, the town clerk and community planning office, town hall, two, 235 North Street, North Reading, um, and are available for inspection by appointment only during the hours of 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Friday. For an appointment, please call the planning office. Uh, the phone number is given. Um, okay. okay, thank you. Okay. So thank you. I'm going to share my screen then so that we can have... Um, So basically, I'm going to first show um, the board just the general plan of land that we had, um, it, just showing each of the lots that are subject to this amendment. Um, basically, um, as Ms. McKnight said, this property is owned by Sergio Coviello um, via an, an LLC entity called 12 to 14 Concord Street and also owned by um, Paul Magliosi. So lot one is owned by Paul Magliosi. Um, however, Sergio does have the right and an option to acquire that property. Sergio does own lot two and lot three. So um, everybody's familiar with the property. This is where the seven acres farm used to be. Here are some of the barn buildings, you know, the chicken coops. Um, and these are the two homes that exist on Concord. Lot three currently um, is a vacant parcel of land. Um, I'm also going to just show you the zoning map um, because I think this is um, view, let's rotate it so it looks a little bit better than this, right? Okay, so here we go. So this is the property um, that is the subject of the rezoning. Pursuant to this particular map, you can see that the residence A is located across the street and to one side of the property. Um, the uh, industrial office is located to the other side. So what we're really trying to do is expand the industrial office a bit over to this area. This is where Bab Bob Bobcat of Boston is and where they have their you know, outdoor areas. Um, and then this particular area here is, is a horse farm. So the proposal as noted in the petition that had been submitted by, I believe Mr. Coviello had secured hundred signatures of town residents um, to rezone these particular parcels from the RA zone 
to the industrial office zone. Um, and that's really it. So we believe that by doing so, instead of having more land developed as residential subdivisions within the town of North Reading, it will give them the opportunity to actually develop the parcel for an industrial purpose and an office purpose. Um, Mr. Coviello has a business in town and does have one, um, a building that he does use presently, and he plans on kind of having the same types of uses out in this particular area, um, which are permitted in the industrial office zone. Um, I don't know if the board has any questions. Last time we had come before the board because we wanted to do an informal hearing before we actually submitted the petition. Um, and we did give notice to the abutters, the direct abutters and had talked to some of them. So um, we're here this evening to simply um, conduct the public hearing portion of the rezoning that's required prior to being heard at town meeting. And if you have any questions at all, Mr. Coviello is on the call and I would be able to answer anything that you could ask, I guess. Thank you very much. Okay, if you can remove your screen share so we can see. We'll put it back up if we need it. You want me to take it down? Yes, please. All done. So that, I, that way I can see if people have questions, okay? <laughs> can you see, now can you see yourselves? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect, I wanted to make sure. I'm yeah, sorry. So, about that. Um, so I, I understood you, you said that um, you've uh, talked to some of the neighbors and some of the people surrounding or you or Sergio has? Yes. So, okay. And okay. Um, I'm going to start by asking if there are any questions from the board on this uh, proposal. Mr. Pierce? Mr. Hayden? I'm not so much of a question. Um, when we build zones within any town or city, we try to put buffers between um, business industrial areas and residence areas. And originally that was a, a farm and there's another one next to it. And I know the person next to this property is really in favor of this going to industrial office space. Um, and it, it does join another, uh, you know, it, it does tie right into it. So it's not a, orphan little zone a spot zone right. it's an extension but of as we zone. as we extend these properties now we're going to be hard against you know real it the, the farm was in residence a but it was rezoned residence a when it was a farm so it was grandfathered and a farm would be grandfathered in there anyways i believe but um once we rezone this then there's going to be a chance to rezone the next then we're going to be you know getting right on top of real residence homes and and it moves it right down and increases the traffic flow in this area and once you go around that corner at the stop sign uh from concord to park street there it gets going to get a little bit um more difficult it's already difficult now um to negotiate that during heavy traffic times in the morning and the evening um but still I, i'm just concerned about extending uh that industrial office area one more one more set a lot towards residents and you know it just it, it doesn't i don't I'm, I'm just concerned about that okay um anybody else have any comments on the from the board okay well, a quick comment that i'm going to make is uh yeah you know you you are right chris except that um um one of the things that would happen on the site plan which is what this would have to have um if the rezoning goes through and then you'd still have to do a site plan and during the process of doing the site plan, that's when the screening and the buffering of the associated properties would happen. And uh, you've seen enough of these to know that that's probably, we, we would probably would require some kind of, some kind of buffering. Right. But a whole lot is better than just a little bit. You know, it yeah. just, it's, it's a, it's a different environment when you're in industrial office space and, you know, dumps is uh, early in the morning and lots of traffic in and out and this and that. And, yeah. and you know, it, it's, it's just, it's just not, you know, farm was in there. I'm sure they made noise too. I'm sure the yeah. turkeys made noise too, but it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's not the same. It's the roosters. I don't think. It's the roosters. <laughs> that's right. And they don't, they don't, they don't uh, crow at night. They crow during the day. So yeah, early uh, in the day. <laughs> uh, anytime, not just at sunrise. And I know okay, that. Okay. So, so, um, all right. So, so uh, that's again, that that's something that's more likely to be dealt with 
in the, in the site plan uh, hearing. So right now we're talking about the rezone, primarily about the rezoning, so. And if I may, one of the, the great things, Mr. Pierce, about this particular property and Mr. Hayden, is that if I can screen share one more time, I'm just going to show you one of the plans again. Um, so I think you can see this plan. Um, let me make it bigger. So you can see this plan of land. So I'm going to annotate. Um, I can't. Okay. So right in this area, I think you can see my hand moving down is Ipswich Street. So it acts as a natural buffer. So that particular street um, can't be built on and is about 70 feet wide um, right here to here. So there is a natural, um, I thought it was only, you know, it's 40 feet wide. I apologize. So I was going to say it didn't look like that, but it's a street line because it's bent. It's a little longer, but it's a 45 foot um, street going all the way down that can't be built upon. So there is, you know, that that additional buffer, Mr. Hayden. I know it's not everything, but there is a, a natural buffer, if you will, yeah, provided on this particular property. The issue, Ms. Man, is that you do one, then the next one's going to want the same thing, and that's on the other side of that buffer. And it, it's it's not spot zoning because it's it's contiguous. It's basically contiguous, even though there's a there's a paper street in there. So and that's where that's where my that's where my issue comes along, and, and it just that, starts moving it right down. Right, and that is true. However, <laughs> this particular property does at least share some of its southern border. The other properties do not. Right. So you can see, it's like this, this is kind of like encapsulated by because this land back here is. I think this is wet, but this land back here it's is all wet all, back there. It's all yeah. wet back there. Exactly. You're not putting. You're not putting any. You're not building back there, even though it's industrial. Yeah. Right about to here is, is it is, but at the same time, this particular property does have more than one of its um, boundaries um, adjacent to an IO. I'll stop sharing so that you can see everybody, Mr. Pierce. Thank you. Okay. Um, any any more questions from the uh, board? Okay, I'm going to open it up to the public. Please uh, state your name and address prior to asking a question, and uh, please direct all questions to the chair. Does anybody have a question or a comment? Okay, I don't. Uh, I'm not hearing anybody. I, I think Mr. Ridgely is trying to make a comment. Yeah, Mr. Ridgely needs to unmute himself. Mr. Ridgely, you have to unmute yourself. Okay. Sorry about that. This is Stephen Vitale. I'm his daughter using my computer. So it's Stephen oh. Vitale, 11 Pompton Street. Okay. Um, listen, I'm 91 years old. I live for 52 years. I moved from Boston to North Reading. And over the years, I see the business zone, not to be proud of. It's been it's been getting worse as years gone by. Yeah. Now, now, and now they want to make expand the business zone third up con up Congress Street, make it much worse, to, worse for the traffic, worse, worse for everybody. We have homes on Congress Street. There's four five homes on Congress Street. We deserve respect from the town to protect our property. And the town's not doing that job by making a business section right across the from my house. How would you like to come out of your house in the morning and see a building of trucks a business across the street from your homes? You make a decision tonight. Make it like this. If you live in some place and have a business across from you live, how would you like that? Well, I've been here a long time and I deserve that respect. There should be no more expansion of the business zone up Parker Street. Not at all. We, we have all kinds of trucks the cars come up to sleep all the times of the day, night and day. The mail trucks come up the street at after 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, early morning hours coming up Parker Street. Those trucks should have been stopped a long time ago by the town. They should use 62. This is not a highway. This is a street over here. It was never built for 18 wheelers. And the cars go around the curve here. The stop sign is. A lot of guys come up from, from Park Street, take a left turn on Park Street, you better watch out. You gotta hug, hug, hug the right side of the street. Get out of my driveway, I have to wait. Then sometimes I had to back around, turn around my driveway. 
because it's so bad the traffic. Now they want to put the industrial up here. That's not right. We have we, we should have rights as people on Cocker Street. Like we pay taxes. Back we pay like taxes twenty two thousand dollars last year's assessment. What what how they get that twenty two thousand dollars? The assessment they don't want to put a business across street from my home, and I'm gonna pay twenty two thousand dollars more in assessment. I'm, I'm, I'm 99, 91 years old, but I, I've lived in the town so long, and they have not been good to us. The street I live in Boston was much better than the street in Concord Street. It's all falling by the night. There's very heavy tra traffic on Concord Street. It looks worse. It's the worst street out of the school street. It's not ready. It has more traffic outside of 28. It's Concord Street. You still outside my house. I count the cars to go by. 20, 20 cars go by a minute of time. Sometimes even more than that. And things are going to get worse when it, it things get back to normal again. They will soon or later. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is Mrs. Vitale, Rosemary Vitale of Living Concord Street. I know you just heard my husband, but I am sick and tired of what's going on here. Like my husband stated, we've been here for over 50 years. 52 years. 52 years. And they have, that this town has done nothing for the residents of Concord Street. The Walters next door and us, the park, we, keep our property we try to keep our property clean. And my husband's always working out there. My hat's in my mouth when he's working down near the street for the traffic. At night, we can't get any sleep because of the damn trucks coming by and the cars, and the lights shine right into our bedroom windows. No matter what the shades down and everything, the light still comes in. There's no threat, the traffic runs 24 hours a day. We haven't get any sleep. First with the farm, with the smell, and, and the odor we put up with, we, every time we called the police station or called the town hall, all we heard was that they had grandfather rights. Well, where were our rights? We had no rights. We paid our taxes every year. You can check. I, I am getting tired of it. My husband and I have been ill. My husband's had heart problems. He's been in the hospital. I've been in the hospital with cancer problems, and we can't even get a decent night's sleep here. I would appreciate the town for change. Look at the people that live on Concord Street. The rest of the town doesn't care because they, they're not living here. And we've always paid our taxes. What are we paying for? No one oversees anything that goes on on the street. I might think of other, other voting. It should be always two thirds vote. It should be a majority vote. And the meeting, these town meeting, like last we had in October, that was a farce. This takes only a small group to, to, to take over the, the thing. Because the, the, the majority vote. That's not right. And this next one being should be the two thirds majority. In fact, vote should be the last one. That should have been a, a, a vote, a special election for that piece of property. That was a good piece of piece of property. It was a big mistake. Uh, people were not ready, not buying it. And the town, for one thing, the town could have took over that property without without the, without the consent of other people. Because they had to show cause, but they decided that property. And make and, and put better part things there than what's just there, what's there now. That's been done in Boston. I know that there has been called Western of Boston. They did that there in Western of Boston. The people had little things and state just took over and they built all those high rise condos there in the West End. And the people and the people are going up the street, they were lost their homes there. They, they, so they decided that same. Probably across the street, they could have, the town could have did the same thing. They should have taken that property and, and put homes there instead of businesses. They could, they, they, they told us they could put nine homes there on that property. They told us at the meeting. It was it was just a value run by the town. The town could have just sized it and took it and, and with, with, it, by improving that property, put a town hall there. Uh, see complex there. Uh, see the place they can go spend the day there. That should have been used for that kind of problem, not a business. 
And I'll answer any questions you want to ask me now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ritson. <clears throat> Okay, uh, would you like to, Jill, would you like to address any of that? Do you have a... Uh... I, I do believe, you know, I, I appreciate the comments by Mr. and Mrs. Vitale, and, and I understand. I think that this particular type of use actually ends up being less burdensome than a, a residential subdivision. It actually will probably yield less traffic less noise and at the times when people want to enjoy their property the businesses are closed um this isn't going to be you know it, it's not a heavy industrial zone it's it's highway office it, it's it, the uses are are similar to what's across the street with with bobcat um it, there is such a burden with a residential development and that's what this would be if it weren't being developed as an industrial or office development. Um, Mr. Coviello is, you know, an exceptionally um, thoughtful person, I think. And when it comes time yeah. to actually come in for the site plan approvals, I think that, you know, Mr. Vitale and Mrs. Vitale should absolutely participate to ensure, you know, that their property, which is across the street, doesn't have an issue with cars and with, with lights. Um, what they're experiencing now has nothing to do with the property across the street. Um, and any development of it is going to change. Um, you know, the, the, we're doing away with that farm use where there can be some, you know, slightly unpleasant odors because of the type of farm it was when you have a poultry farm. Um, and we truly do believe that our use is going to not be noxious. It's going to create tax revenue. We're going to be good neighbors. And that the most appropriate thing in this area to try to mitigate for the traffic is actually this type of development, which is low traffic impact. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Um, <clears throat> any other uh, comments on this? I have a comment. If they don't want to put the homes there, they could put a, a, a town hall. They would talk about putting the town hall. That would be a good spot for the town hall. And that's what, that's what, that's what, the town hall don't have that much traffic in it. So they could use that property for a town hall. Well, have you, have you uh, gone behind the town hall on a regular work day yet? It's busy. <laughs> it's busy. It's almost... It, there's times you can't even fit get in the parking lot out behind the town hall. You go go take a ride there. You'll see what I mean. I've tried to work getting when I try. I end up parking on the grass because there's no place to park. There are so many vehicles there. So uh, that's that's um, <laughs> that's just personal experience. So um, um, does anybody else have any comments? Um, um, sir, do you have anything you'd like, Miss Vitali? As far as uh, I know, you. Uh, um, you'll be very, I know you, how you'll be, you'll be very careful with what you do. I think that uh, he needs to know that there'll be screening and things like that, you know, oh, to protect him from uh, the lights and the, and his, you know, and again, I, I do agree with Jill that uh, if you put a residential development in there and you're going to get a lot more cars than are going to come out of your commercial building. So, so uh, they, they put the business there. And this, that's what it comes down to. The people don't care about Park Street. If there's a house, only five houses down there, just, just tough luck. And that's what people are doing. That's, what, that's three, four people go home. There's 36 people living there. There's going to be more than 36 people living across the street there, working there every day. He has, this guy has a lot of cars and trucks. The only one they put, they put these trucks on the back of your head. They're going to be parking in the parking lot. They, he has over 30 trucks. That means 30 drivers. Um, 10 people in the office, five people in the office. That's 35. He, he's going to have a maintenance crew. He's going to talk about 40 people that are be driving cars in there every day, in and out. And, 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 and is that the goal? Mercy cases, a lot of trucks can be leaving there and, and mercy runs. Anything comes up. We're, we'll be stuck with here with these problems. You people all live in nice homes. But not people in Cocker Street, where you live, you live nice, nice quiet street, no traffic, you live like kings. And us peons here on Cocker Street, well, forget about them. They're only peons. You want to do what you want, but don't try about this town. That's how this town's run. 
You're not, you're not fair at all. Right. Okay. Um, do we have any kind of comments from anybody? I just want to, I want to say, Ms. Vitale, if you could listen just for a minute. Uh, this, 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 this street is, is, um, um, is zoned industrial office, IO. And it's, in, it's zoned that way because if we don't have enough, if we don't have some kind of industrial office, if we don't, don't have some kind of commercial development, it ends up affecting your taxes on your houses and everything. So, so every town, some towns uh, have huge areas of industrial uh, and all up against residential, and that's how it is. We have not that much. So what we have, we have to use. I mean, I think that's the thing. I'm sorry that you, that, that your, that your uh, way you live, that this, uh, and I agree, Clockett Street's a mess. I don't know why it should, it needs to be fixed. You can't even drive down there. I, I avoid it because the track, because the road is in such poor shape. So um, I agree that that's probably been overlooked, but um, as far as anything that would happen uh, in this other piece of property, there'd be proper screening and proper buffering. If that's uh, part of a site plan review to protect uh, the neighbors and everybody else from any impacts of it. So that will be considered. And of course, on the on the uh, west side of it, there's, all there is is another commercial property. So there's not gonna be any issues there and a fireman on the other side. So. Um, uh, I, I think that you might find that this uh, that if that he'll do a good job and, and it, you won't I think the impact you'll have that you have right now from these vehicles that are coming down there now is probably the limit of what you'll ever have because you probably won't even notice this so um, so uh, um, any other comments or anything from anybody okay um, do we uh is our we uh do we have a, a motion to or a uh, are we just going to make a recommendation at town meeting or? It's up to you. Um, if you would like, I I have a motion prepared to um you know for the CPC to support this at town meeting, but you can wait till town meeting if you prefer. It's it's up to you. Vincenzo, what's the uh, select board doing? Are they making their motion there? Uh, your um, motion at town meeting? Um, we have not, this has not come up. So okay. I'm assuming that's what it will be. But I think, I mean, up until this point, it's been, I mean, mostly a, uh, you know, CPC, ZBA issue. Like it hasn't been a select board issue. So that's why okay. there hasn't been commentary on it just because it's a, it's a zoning, you know, so it's kind right, of, right. Uh, you know, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's those who would always give a comment of ask, but I, I don't mm -hmm. think it's so. But I can get back to you on that. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Uh, you know, or we can, you can even ask when we do go. I know you're going to be at the warrant article meeting. You can ask then. Um, or I can get you an answer then. So. Okay. Well, I, I think um, that I was thinking that when it, when it comes up for uh, the select board to hear it, there might be more uh, the ability to have some more input um, on it, so that would make, that would uh, might be the best time for us to then make a decision. So, um, um, but I'll leave it up to the board here. What do you? Uh, what's the board think, Chris? What do you? Uh... Uh, I'm going to vote not to support it. So, you guys want to do it today? I, it's going to be that for me. I just don't think it's the proper thing to do there. Okay, Dave? Um, I think it would go a long way. Um, you know, I think Jill touched on it the last time she presented to, I know it's first, you know, there's steps here. There's a zoning and then there's a site plan submittal. And yeah. at that during that process, that's when we can talk about siting, building siting, paving and all that. But I mean, yeah. it, this is a really important thing to for for us to know, and then I think for people like the Vitalis to understand, like what's this thing going to look like. And so, if if you do, attorney man, have any any kind of images you can show. I mean, they're conceptual; they're not anything, you know, that we we would, you know, they're not binding kind of things. But this is you've got to be thinking about the siting of it at this point, and where you're going to put the building, and where you're going to put the paving. And I think having some comfort of what you're going to actually do 
and how much buffer there could be. Because if you go down Concord Street, there's some buildings and primarily on the right where, where Mr. Coviello is right now that are set back enough and the activities in the back and there's really, there's really not a lot of activity happening um, on those buildings if they're set back enough. And that could be the same thing here. And I don't know. That's why I can't pass judgment on it without knowing what it looks like. Well, tonight we're just primarily dealing with the zoning article, not with the actually site plan. So, so Understood. in other words, if there is, if the zoning article doesn't go through, then, then that would mean that the uh, there would be no, you know, site plan. Exactly. Site plan. You understand the position that puts, you know, Vice Chair, Chris, you know, Chris, in the same position as all of us, is we, we just want to know maybe what it's going to look like. Because I'm, yeah. I'm leaning towards because I do think it's it it makes good sense. It is part of and it neighbors Bobcat, but I don't think with how narrow Park that uh, Concord Street is right up in that section too. I don't think it should have any. It should have a pretty decent buffer um, back, yeah. back until you you know it's got to have a driveway, but bet it should go back. Uh, fully, fully, uh, you know, uh, right. landscape all the way back for for a fair distance, and it looks like the the parcel parcels plural could provide that that buffer, but I don't know. I just conceptually, I can see it in my head, but I don't know exactly what is being planned. Right. right. So the, okay, the Ryan, building. You, uh, uh, hang on, Ryan. Do you have a any comments? Yeah, I... I'll be honest, I, sh I share Chris and David's sentiment on that. I think for me, it's a good example of what we just looked at with the uh, overlay district um, and the, the added benefit of seeing the plan and kind of getting a feel for what the intention was to support that. Um, and here, without seeing that, I feel as though we're kind of, you know, we're, we're letting the Trojan horse in if we approve this at this point without without having any idea of what's, I mean, I know there's a site plan review, but we only have so much leverage at that point. And I feel like, uh, you know, getting some sort of commitment for what the layout of this is gonna be and understanding of the amount of vehicular traffic, the amount of parking spots would obviously impact that and the size of the building. And I think all those things uh, I'd have to take into consideration before supporting uh, mm -hmm. For for all the reasons that that Chris mentioned, you know, it's the it's the creep of this industrial zone that you know is difficult to justify unless you can kind of make the case that this is truly going to be less impactful than what it's currently zoned as. And mm -hmm. with the information we have today, I don't think I can definitively say that I can be told that, but mm -hmm. I think it it still leaves the door open for things to change and for a you know. The concerns that Mr. Vitali brought up to be realized if we don't have some sort of commitment beyond what we've heard so far. Right. Jeremiah, you got any thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I mean, I have to admit, I mean, I know that stretch of road well, and I have to admit that when I first looked at this, I it was difficult to conceptually see how that fit, um, particularly given the, the the series of houses on the other side of the street in front of the Vitali. Um, you know, if this parcel of land was a bit further west and south, then we're dealing with more industrial on the other side of the road. I mean, easy, no brainer. I mean, that would make it a simple determination. Um, but that is a unique stretch of road with a unique uh, intersection. And having gone to that farm many times myself, I, I, I struggle to imagine how that would work. That said, I understand the arguments for it. I also understand our ability to help shape it through the next phases of this process to kind of reach the goal uh, of mitigating those, uh, those, those issues, but I can't picture it. So and, until I can kind of see how this could conceptually work, it, it, it mm -hmm. is very difficult to-, well, to I, think that, I, think, I think that's why I, uh, I said we, should, we can wait till we do the, uh, either have another hearing ourselves or to take a look at something or we can go, we can wait for the, the uh, uh, select boards meeting because by that time, there'll be an opportunity to bring a lot more information forward if they can generate it. So that might make it easier for us to make a decision then or at town meeting, whichever uh, whichever works the best. So, um, so uh, is that a is that acceptable to all on the board here? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Cobiel, did you want to make any comments tonight? You're muted, so you'd have to unmute yourself. Yeah, the only comments I want to make is is that uh, there's two houses across the street now. Uh, my plan is not to do anything with them at this point, only because if it's industrial, we would do one thing. If it's residential, we would do another. Um, so I, I, I didn't want to spend a lot of money to get all kinds of plans to show everybody what was going to happen because if it goes residential it's totally totally different uh, uh plans uh it doesn't it doesn't uh go um you know the way it is but so the people understand that the driveway for that land is very close to bobcat of boston the driveway that is going to be for there it's really close to bobcat of boston so the driveway is not going to be uh, in uh, inside uh, to the left of those two houses that they now. Also, you know, chicken farm that it was there, seven acre farm, uh, they had a lot of traffic uh, going in and out of there uh, because people came in, fought their stuff, worked out. I, I don't think we'll even have half of of the um, uh, traffic that that would uh, entail uh, for for our business because we just don't have that kind of volume goes in and out. It's not a, a business you need to buy something and, and walk out again. Uh, it's, it's a business we go there in the morning, we do, the trucks go out and then they come back in the afternoon. Um, so I just feel that, you know, the driveway, everybody's concerned with the driveway. The driveway <laughs> is very, very close to Bobcat of Boston because that's where the entrance is uh, for that piece of land. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's, my comments that I would like to everybody to know. I wish I could have a plan set up so you guys can see, but I, I, I don't think is appropriate at this time, only because we're asking for rezoning, not a plan. I would have to come before uh, the, um, uh, the planning board to get anything approved uh, later on, obviously, if it gets approved. Uh, as far as the, the selectman is concerned, if, if, they feel that they want to meet with us. I will be glad to uh, have uh, Jill set up a, a meeting with you guys, uh, the select board, and, and talk to them, uh, see what their uh, you know input is, or see what they feel that it's they want to do. Yeah. Okay. I think I think the that was one of the concerns was being able to see of get some kind of a you know conceptual idea of what might happen there. Um, might make the difference between whether people were comfortable with the rezoning or not. I think that's what the comments were. And and I think Mr. Mr. Pierce, we would be able to give a very rough concept plan. You know, show yeah. where we're going to retain the two homes because really those are going to act as a buffer because there can't cannot be. Would you mind if I apologize? Would you mind if I shared one more time? Go ahead. So when you see um, the actual plan. The, I'm going to show you the one with the um, 1991 plan. So um, I think, can you all see that? Not yet. No. No, not yet. Okay, let's see. Share. Here we go. Now you can, right? Yep. Okay. So basically, what is going to be a continued buffer for the project is actually the existing homes. There's no intent to take these down. Um, we have to reconfigure the lot line somewhat because of the fact that residential um, lots have to maintain 160 feet of frontage. Um, but in, in this particular district, these have to have 200 feet of frontage. So we have to actually work out some issues with regard to how we would break up the lot. But the way it would work is we would retain these structures. I, I don't recall, Mr. Coviello, if he was going to keep the barn. These two barns are not going to be kept. They're chicken coops. But these would be, so you'd have that natural buffer. And then because these properties exist here, because of the setbacks, we would not be able to even locate a building until somewhere in this vicinity, which is you know, 200, 300 feet back from, from Concord Street. So there's going to be the opportunity to properly buffer. Um, and relative to this side, as I said, there's a 40 foot automatic anyway, plus the setback. And the board during the special permit, I mean, the site plan approval process can require us even to give a greater setback because we abut a residential zone. 
So because of that, there's that additional setback that you do have the authority to require, and that would push us back into this area. Our intent is definitely to hug the, um, the bobcat area. So I guess the whole point here is, is that the effect on the neighboring properties that are residential is being mitigated um, tremendously just by the existing nature of the property and how you'd actually form your access. So again, you'd come in, you'd have to go down about two, 300 feet more. You have to go down 300 feet because this is 281 to here. Um, to here. You'd have to go down that far before you could even begin to put in a building. Um, and then, you know, back here, you have some wetland lines and you have other issues. So, you know, the so property is not going to be overdeveloped. If I may, if I may, you all missed my point. The reason why I don't want to rezone this property is it pushes the zone into residential, makes it larger, and it allows it to go the next step when the next piece of property is sold or they decide to take it from being a farm. That's my problem. I know we have restrictions and I know there's a site plan review. I know there's all these other things, Joe, but you know, it, it, there's, I haven't seen a good reason to take this property and make it a business property yet, it, 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 you know, office or whatever. It, it, I haven't been convinced. And what you're telling me is stuff that we have control over if it's ever changed from a residence A. And I know we have control over what that becomes as a residence A also because it would have to come in as a subdivision. I've been doing this a long time. I understand that. I'm looking at what the zoning you're asking to change is. You're asking to put business against another piece of residential property, which would then is going to be able to allow that one easily to go to the next one. And suddenly we're on top of the homes. Right now, we're not on top of homes. If you put in a multifamily something in there, they choose to move there. These other people are living there now. And we're moving the zone into their backyards. Well, in okay. fact, it's into the, across the street. There's no... Excuse me, Joe. It is not across the street when you move it next to the horse farm. Oh, oh, this area. Okay, yeah, the and farm. then the horse farm decides they don't want to be a horse farm anymore because there's more money in doing something else. So they move it to the next, and, and then there's no way to stop it. That's not spot zoning because it's connected. And it doesn't matter if you've got one lot line or two lot lines in the, in the industrial office zone. It matters that you have a lot line. It doesn't, give it, more, it doesn't give it more strength that it has two lot lines, like you said before. I, I, as far as I'm concerned. All right. So that's, and everybody seems to be missing that. You're all talking how we're going to design this stuff. We don't know what you're going to even thought about putting there, you know, other than a business. Um, so that's, that's where I'm coming from. And we do we definitely understand it. It's the position that, you know, doing, creating a residential subdivision here is more tax negative, more traffic impactful than would be an industrial zone, you know, relative to traffic, a normal. Relatively spot. speaking, it is not. It because is. If you, got, because if, it, you get um, 50, if you get 50 is. cars going in there, Jill, half of them are coming out of, from Main Street. The other half of them come from the highway. So you're going to impact that whole length of traffic. If you put nine houses in there, by the traffic engineers, between seven and nine, you're going to have maybe 10 trips. Right. But throughout the day, you generate. And there's nine, more, yeah, yeah, and the traffic generation have, reports are clear. It's nine to 10 not trips cars, per They're day. trucks in an office area during the day. And I think that's what I just heard from the neighbor across the street. You, you heard that there was a tremendous amount of traffic generated along the street because it's shared. It's it's a tr it, there's a lot of industrial traffic because there's businesses down one end. Putting a residence here is is only going to increase it all day long and on the okay. Week. I mean that's that's you know it's and it's, I was I was I I, I that's was why we to the that. gentleman also and I understand that Joe. <laughs> okay. 
And I understand. I mean, this is this is our position, and I understand that the board has the ob obligation to review and make its recommendation to town meeting as to whether or not the zone should extend. I mean, whether or not another property is going to be also part of that extension shouldn't really be part of the conversation. It should be limited to what we are looking at in this lot, and if it's appropriate, and if the board well, needs it not. Well, yeah, that's that's. That I'm, I look. I look towards the future. I don't look for today. That's in our title, Community Planning Commission. Right. We yeah. look for the plan, what's going to happen, and what can we affect. You can't, you can't, and differentiated fears for the future, though, isn't part of it to think that something's going to be rezoned. We don't know. I get it. If you don't think that this is a good plan, that's one thing. But it, it, to determine it based on a possibility of, of a rezoning, uh, it's still subject to town meeting approval. And if town meeting deems it to be a worthy change, then, you know, the, that's the right. And if it's a worthy change, it's a worthy change. I don't have to agree with that change, but I if agree. the townspeople, I... if the townspeople vote that way, that's, that's a different story. I can't stop it and I won't stop it. I understand. I understand. Okay. Um, okay. Jill, that, that, one of the things that occurred to me is um, first of all, is that if your plan that you were just showing showed the properties across the street. Oh, so, you know, I'm sorry. I have another plan that will. Because then the, then the people could see really if there's uh, an impact on them. I, th I just want to see, I don't know if this plan does or doesn't. Okay, one second. I might have something. The area, I have an aerial, Mr. Pierce, that definitely does. <clears throat> can you Can you see this now? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so basically I'm just gonna orient you. Um, here, here are those um, chicken coops, basically. It looks like they're real big buildings, but they're chicken coops. That's what mm -hmm. this is. And here are the two homes. Yeah. So here's the property line, goes just like that. So here are the homes that are across the street. They're probably where we'll, we would do the development. This is where it would enter. Because remember on the plan, this is part of the frontage. It would come right. in here and the development would be here. So kind of out behind Bobcat. Yes. It's basically, you know, if you will, draw the line. Mm -hmm. Sergio, I'm correct, right? That's what we had discussed that would be right in here. That is correct. Okay. Um, uh, hopefully that, that helps a little to give people an idea of where they, you know. So if those residential houses stay out front, then they're basically they'll be residential across the street from a residential. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sergio wanted to be able to have it blend. And not just yeah. You know, there's no purpose to taking those buildings down. They're good buildings. So yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I believe he will do the best he can. Um, okay. Um, do I uh, have any other comments on this? And uh, I guess we've kind of agreed that we're going to wait till after the the select mm -hmm. board's hearing to uh, and perhaps make our decision at town meeting. And um, that's okay. Um, I um, just wonder, Chris, where you know we we um, we've lost so much of our commercial land to residential everywhere. It seemed like not that you know that it wasn't uh, uh, such a bad thing to gain a little of it back. And yeah, so but you know now, excuse me, there are a lot of houses right now that are but commercial property because they wanted to and they forced us to let them do it, as opposed to. Yep. Well, that's yeah. right. They forced us to let them so do where it. Was, the people... There was no planning there other than we were forced to let them build um, residential houses as opposed to having some say about whether there was residential up against commercial. They forced that's them. right. That's right. So um, adding us little commercial on is not a bad thing, I think, in this particular case, especially uh, in a... a it's it's the, you got to remember the snowball I effect I, that it happens for Please, excuse me. In an I.O. district, which is a pretty uh, benign district, it's no heavy, nothing heavy in that district, mm -hmm. which is, um, it's kind of a nice district. It's better than some of the others that we would have. So, so that's my comment on it. Um, if we, um, okay, Jill, you can unshare your. Well, your sorry. Yeah. Thank you. That, I mean, you know, if you did it with, a, with lots, it might also be, you could see the lot lines might. Yeah, I tried to actually imp superimpose them, and I'm not that good. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I mean, you're going to, again, there's going to be another, you're going to have to go to the select board anyway. So, so we will be invited to that um, meeting? Well, yeah. I haven't heard the date yet of the public hearings for warrant articles, but uh, yes, I think the town administrator's office will notify you of that. Yeah. And so what I'm hearing, Mr. Pierce, is maybe if I could do, uh, if I could get a plan that shows perhaps even that aerial, if I could get some sort of a concept plan superimposed, that would be helpful, not only for the board members, but also probably for the selectmen as well. And then well, the general the public. Because they can see that their house might not be across the street from a, a sure. commercial enterprise, might be across the street from another house. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. that. I'll, I'll make sure I have something prepared that I can that right share. Now. So, you know. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, then I'm going to close this uh, hearing for now. And uh, do I need, I don't need to continue this, do I, Danielle? We can just close. No. You can okay, just so um, before I do those, Sergio, any comments? You want last comments um, you'd like to make? Okay. Oh, I think I'm all set. Right. Okay, thank you. Yes. Jill, you all set? All set, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to close this, uh, this public hearing. I thank you all very much for attending and for bringing your comments in, to this. And we'll um, obviously take the whole thing under advisement. And we'll look a little more at it at, it at the uh, select board meeting. and. Uh, and uh, make our decision probably at uh, a uh, town meeting. And um, yeah. thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Okay, thanks. Okay. So um, we got some minutes, and then we should do the minutes. And then... <coughs> yes. We actually, we have one more zoning hearing, and this would be very brief, oh, but. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, the reason for this one is oh, that zoning map amendment. Yes, yes. sorry. And yeah. that that would be only if um, the citizens' petition for industrial office passes. We will also need an accompanying zoning amendment to update the date on the zoning map. The other um, zoning, uh, the overlay district uh, that Mr. Wheeler introduced, already has that built in, but this one does not. So, if one gets passed over or doesn't pass, we would also not. We would also pass over this one, um, okay. but I can read the uh, hearing notice for that. Can I just, are you making a recommendation for Concord Street to recommend at town meeting or? Not tonight. Okay. So what we're gonna do, Vincenzo, you have to leave? Uh, well, yeah, I do. Okay. It's a uh, public hearing. Do you have to continue it? Um, I don't know. It just this needs is Debbie. to close. They don't have to make a recommendation oh. and if they want to, but it's just they're just required to hold the hearing to have okay. it on the yeah. All right. collect and take the input. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, thanks, Vincenzo. If you need to go, go ahead. We'll uh yeah, we'll my my apologies. And then uh yeah, I mean Danielle, maybe we can you can even circle back with me or the, even Mike about this tomorrow just to see if yeah. whatever we gotta yeah. You know, okay. just to, and I'll, yeah. I'll probably need to follow up with you about the next thing we're talking about, which is the um, 5G stuff. So yeah, yeah, I saw. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm a little crunched for time tonight. Um, yep. So, okay. but uh, but yeah, so well, everyone have a have a nice night. You know, all right. Thank you. Hopefully you guys. Yeah, Vincenzo. Bye. Yeah, Bye. Okay. okay. I can so, read the. Oh, so, what, so you want to read the public hearing notice and we'll open the hearing and there'll really be not much right um to it okay. go ahead oh boy pursuant to mass general laws chapter 40a section 5 the community planning commission um, excuse me of the town of north reading will hold a virtual public hearing on tuesday april 6 2021 commencing at 8 15 p.m via zoom as uh, a virtual meeting access uh, information is given the purpose of the public hearing is to provide interested parties the opportunity to comment on a proposed amendment to the North Reading Zoning Bylaw, which has been submitted to the 2021 Annual Town Meeting to update Section 200-30 zoning map with a new revision date pending approval of one or more zoning map amendments by Town Meeting and the Attorney General's Office. A complete copy of the text of the proposed amendment to the North Reading Zoning Bylaw is on file with the Town Clerk and is available for inspection on the Town of North Reading website um, it, it, uh, under zoning amendments um, 
in end in the Community Planning Commission office uh, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Friday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, by appointment only. The full number is given, advertised in the North Reading transcript, March 18th and March 25th, 2021. Um, just the proposed new date of the zoning uh, map would become June 5th, pending uh, Attorney General approval of the Industrial Office uh, rezoning map amendment. And that's, that's really all there is to that. Okay. Okay, any comments from everybody, anybody on the board? This is a conditional thing, you know, basically if there's any, well, actually, if we do the uh, overlay zone for uh, Bruce Wheeler, that would still trigger the, re the rezone, the zoning map. Well, that one already has a provision because it was our sponsored article, we were able to write it so that it okay. included a zoning map update, um, yep. but this one, uh, you know, being a citizen's petition that we didn't write, uh, we had to add it after. Okay. All right. Okay. So any comments from the board again? So um, any comments from the public on this? So hearing none, um, I guess I can close the public hearing and we can call that a hearing and away we go. <laughs> Um, okay, <coughs> that leaves us with uh, some minutes, which we, and then the 5G, let's do the minutes first. Do you, uh, Ryan, do you have, can you see those? He, he doesn't have any motions, huh, tonight? Um, no, I'm sorry, I, I didn't upload it into the share file in time. Okay. Um, the, so, so the motion would be to uh, um, approve the March 2nd, uh, 2021 minutes as written. I so move. Okay. Second. Second. Second by Chris. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. A little delayed there. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's five in favor, no opposed. So um, okay, Danielle, next. Okay. Um, okay. So the the five G. You want to launch into that now? No, I want to do the March oh, eighteenth meeting. Minutes. Oh, they're not. They're I think not we available. just have. Yeah. Oh, they're not out there. No. Okay, no. then let's do the five G. Do we have any ZBAs anyway? I didn't see any. Not for this meeting. Okay. All right. Okay. Five G. Okay. I know I came to the meeting late. Can I just ask? Did you do three hundred three Main Street? Yes. Yes. You did in the beginning. Okay, I missed it. Okay. Oh, we approved that. Do you need signatures, Debbie? Yes, I will need signatures. All right. You're going to be around tomorrow? Yep. All right. I'll give you a call. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So there are, there are two things that we need to look at. And I tried to sum summarize this in the memo, but basically in order to have some regulation for uh, small wireless facilities, which come with a different set of you know, timeframes and are um, a faster turnaround that the town is required to respond to and has less control over. Um, town council has advised us to um, recommend a policy to the select board. The select board can choose to pass it or not, it's up to them. But the recommendation I think from us would be to have a policy for application procedures and for aesthetics. And it applies both to small cell installations and to utility installations in the right of way. The policy is basically written. It was mostly written by town council with some additions from me where I saw other communities had added certain provisions. They have reviewed that, they're fine with it. They ask us to fill in the blanks of everything having to do with, with aesthetics, height, whole diameter, things like that. I did as much research as I could to see what other communities are doing. They're all very consistent, um, but a key difference that we have to contend with is that RMLD believes that most of the installations that will be requested in the town are going to be on their poles on Main Street specifically. So everything that we pass really should be consistent with what RMLD can do on their polls, because if we pass a set of regulations that's different, it will impact not only small wireless installations on RMLD polls, but it will also impact other utility installations on RMLD, uh, RMLD polls. And we really don't want to complicate what they already have in place. 
So I looked at the specifications from RMLD. I spoke with John McDonough at RMLD, who was very helpful and is happy to review our policy um, and aesthetic recommendations for consistency. Um, and so what I've done is I've created a, a, you know, from KP and for myself, we have this draft policy in there. And the goal would be if we were to look at it, decide whether we were comfortable with what was in it in order to recommend it to the select board and then they could take it up. Their next meeting is April 12th. And I've been told that they can have agenda time to devote to this on April 12th. Um, now in terms of figuring out what these things look like, um, it's very hard to find a community that has had a good set of aesthetic regulations and then look at what was actually installed in the town because many of them have regulations and no installations. Many towns that have installations don't have any regulations, they're just there. Um, the coverage maps show some areas where you can find and pinpoint poles, but other coverage areas shown, there are no small cell installations. I don't know if that's because the coverage is achieved through regular tall cell towers um, at the same time. I'm just not sure of that, but there were many instances where I thought I was driving to take a picture of a pole and no pole. And then I would be driving elsewhere and I would say, oh, there's one. So I tried to put in as many images as I could. They typically look the same. They're tacked onto these, you know, the tops of, you know, these utility poles. And RMLD has provided many, many, many different um, types of equipment in their diagrams that they put. And I put that in the share file too, just to kind of demonstrate. There can be a pretty wide array, um, but typically the ones that I was seeing were of the top that looks like a little Q-tip um, on top of a wooden pole, or you can have, um, you know, the, the kind of, uh, they look like those arrays, they're the straight up and down vertical. Um, so I tried to put a few samples of, of images in there. I don't think we have tremendous, you know, leeway as far as making them look pretty, although we can prohibit them from being on our decorative light poles. We can restrict them further in historic districts, et cetera. Part two is a zoning amendment. And everything I just described has to do with in the public right of way, utility installation in the, in the right of way. And we have what happens on private property. Right, so that's why we would also, we are recommended also by KP to have a zoning amendment to govern what goes onto private property. Most towns don't have this and um, it's good to have it in place just in case. Um, I have submitted an article to town meeting to pass a zoning amendment that <laughs> is that is, it's a very simple zoning amendment and it refers back to an aesthetics policy. Now we don't have to have that policy written the day of town meeting, but KP is recommending that it be consistent with whatever the board passes, the select board passes for their policy. We would use the same set of aesthetic regulations. So I guess what I'm saying is there are, there's a little bit of, there's urgency and there's not. There's urgency in the sense that tomorrow, Verizon could come to RMLD and say, we wanna put you know, installations on several poles on Main Street and we don't have a plan in place, so they pretty much get to do it. And RMLD will have their own guidelines and their own rules, but we won't have had any of our own aesthetic, which our aesthetics kind of have to match what RMLD needs anyway. Um, there's not too much more that we're gonna be able to do on their poles. So uh, my hope was we could make a recommendation to pass along the policy as it's drafted to the select board they could choose to pass it or not. We would go ahead with our warrant article, with it, which is the pretty simple zoning amendment that refers to aesthetics that the CPC will have on file, which we can develop on our own. And we would make sure they were in, you know, they were consistent with whatever the select board passes. That's kind of how I would, was hoping this would play out in terms of our, our timing and taking care of this issue. But of course, um, you know, we can proceed any way you see fit. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, so what I didn't, uh, in the share file, we have the latest two proposals from KP, approved by KP, which is the one for the right of way and the one for private property. Right. So right. I still got to fill it in, you said some. But I have you fill it in now or, or, or did you already fill it in? I filled it in. I tried to fill it in with what is pretty consistent as far as what other communities have done. Yeah. but I also compared it to the RMLD specs. For example, a lot of communities say that you have to have your installation, anything pole mounted has to be, you know, between eight and 10 feet off the ground. RMLD says 12 feet. So I put in 12 feet. Um, yeah. 
KP suggested we fill in, you know, what is the maximum pole diameter? Well, I asked RMLD and they said, we don't recommend that you do that as part of your aesthetics because pole diameter is entirely dependent on what other equipment has to be on that pole. So we choose our class of pole based on that and not based on what it looks like. And we really can't, I mean, they didn't really recommend that we do that. So I, most communities are not doing that. So I'm recommending taking that out. So <coughs> I have filled in as much as I can. I don't really think there's anything blank um, other than where I've recommended we delete. Well, I, uh, you know, I, my, my, um, my, my concern about some of the things that they're doing and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hoping that they have some of their engineers involved in this because these, this equipment is relatively heavy. I don't remember what the weight of it was. Was it 200 pounds or something? I, I forget what the what the weight was. But you, the further up the pole you put that, the more leverage it has on tipping the pole over. So you know, so uh, the diameter of the pole then becomes rather important because if the pole's too skinny, it won't carry the weight, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm thinking. Warren, that RMLD is going to tell them that if you're going to put something up there bigger, then you're going to have to change the pole. Yeah, that's, that's an ex you know, that's an go. expense, and that's and so RMLD's got to control that that way. They're not yeah. going to let something dangerous go up there, and so it's kind of hard for well, us. There's my concern. I mean, I uh, you know I enough about uh, physics to know that there's a <laughs> and you, you can you can get yourself in a little bit of trouble here if you're not careful <laughs> about, about the uh, making sure that you. Uh, that the tail doesn't wag the dog here. Mr. Oh. Chairman, I think the notes on all the diagrams from RMLD, you know, the note number six, RMLD engineering will perform an engineering load analysis of each pole to determine appropriate pole height in class. So, I mean, I think that's how they approach it um, <coughs> on what's going to be mounted on it. Well, if we've limited it, or if they've tell us that we have to limit it 12 feet, no lower than 12 feet, um, that's a significant difference from the eight feet that everybody else was doing. Right, which I put 12 feet into that provision, but pole diameter is different. Most, so KP is recommending that, of course, we, they're, they are required to show that they're structurally sound and they're not going to fall down. But what RMLD was saying is don't make pole width a, an aesthetic recommendation because, yes, it's, it, it's maybe yeah, important it's what it looks like, but it's much more important to be sure it will properly support the equipment. Right, right. Yeah, so I agree that it's it probably doesn't fit under aesthetics. Right. It would fit under engineering. Right. So that's covered. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I'm just you know, it was it sound a little inconsistent for a bit there. So. Um, um, well, it's so not really consistent because RMLD has their own requirements that they don't want right. our any of our aesthetics to be in conflict with. So it is. In, I mean, in some places it could be inconsistent, but I looked at other, I only addressed pole diameter because KP suggested we do it as an aesthetic consideration, but no other communities are doing that. And I think for good reason, because you really can't make it an aesthetic consideration. It's, it's an engineering question. So right. this is so how, these are all of the things I've just tried to research each one of them. And I filled yeah. in those blanks to try to make sense of it. So, so what do we have to do with this now? Do we have to vote on it and then send it to the select board or do we yeah, so if you think it's already. well, I've already submitted the warrant article. Um, it's basically a placeholder with with some details to be added, but it's basically written. Um, right. Yeah. So as it's drafted here, the way I've given it to you was what you know we would pass along to this to the select board. Um, one for their policy, two for the warrant. Um, unless you you know if you have objections or if you think it should be dealt with differently or if you don't. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, what I will though is ask the rest of the board if they'd like to bring this back at another meeting to actually do a vote on it or if you feel comfortable with what, if you've, if you've had a chance to read it. If you haven't, you might want to and then maybe at the next meeting we'll vote on it. Would that be acceptable, Danielle? I mean, it can be. It's, the only thing would be so when I asked the town administrator when the select board could consider the policy, he suggested April 12th would be a good time okay. for them. And then I think we're really into more of the town meeting related stuff. Um, okay, so I mean, I want a decision tonight. I, you know, I, but if you're not ready to vote on what's in there, if you need more time to digest it and think about it, then I don't think we're going to be able to make a recommendation on April 12th. So, um, well, no one has, a, I mean, no one has approached the town yet for this. They've approached Reading, but they right. have not approached RMLD for us. 
Yeah. I, I have a question. Uh, yep. This is a this is a select board's policy, right? It doesn't have to go to town meeting. The zoning does, but the policy. The doesn't. zoning does, but yeah, the zoning and this are not tied hand in hand. We could we could push the zoning on, and and we could give the selectmen a draft mm -hmm. that we have not yet finalized, so that they have something to look at, mm -hmm. um, and we can continue on with the zoning amendment uh, through town meeting in June. Get that mm -hmm. get that in you know see if we can get that passed in and in, in the code um and then by then you know right after that the selectmen will be up to speed because they'll be looking at stuff on their own hopefully mm -hmm. and they'll be able to their next meeting maybe look at the um the the two items um and vote on those and and, and make their policies uh at that time so i don't think it's really out of line to 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 hold off and make sure we're we know what's going on in these policies, and I think Warren, that's what you're thinking of, right? Yeah, I want to try not to rush it. Be, be comfortable with them to make sure we don't have any input. It sounds like Danielle's done a lot of research already. Oh, so she has. Uh, I've read I've, I've yeah. read through them. I mean, not enough, but um, yeah. you know, with these these kind of things, you have to read them more than once. Yeah, um, well, yeah I'm sure Danielle, you read them a dozen times before you did anything. Yeah, it's, it is hard to visualize, though. I mean, you were looking at this technical stuff that it doesn't have a clear picture with what it actually physically looks like. And right. half of it's not up to us anyway. But no, I think if you want to go ahead with, you know, the zoning article, which would be taken up at town meeting and which is basically all written. Um, and then we can be working on an aesthetic policy in the meantime, you know, the select board does not have to have passed their policy before town meeting. KP was recommending that they do that at first, but then they told me really, they just should be consistent. That's all, they should just right. be consistent. Right, and, and that's- but soon, but not on April 12th, because I don't okay, think so, they're ready uh, so, so primarily the zoning, um, the, the article that discusses the zoning is just to, just to allow them in the into our residential zones. Is that? No, right? they're already allowed. <laughs> okay, um, that's the it's, federal. It's to it's to to give guidance for the application procedures, fees, and then to not fees specifically, but to say that we can set fees and to right. say that we can set aesthetic, reasonable aesthetic regulations. But those aesthetic okay. regulations don't have to be worked into the text of the zoning. They just have to be passed by the CPC at a public hearing. They can be amended from time to time. They're on file with the yeah. town clerk, just like okay. our site plan review regulations. So, so we really don't have much to discuss on this. Basically, we just have to agree that we're going to uh, support the zoning article. Is that correct? Yes. And then, and then we'll, we'll support the zoning article and then basically um, if we get the uh, the rest of it put together, that's fine. If if it happens <coughs> at some point slow, uh, shortly thereafter, that would be good enough. Yeah, I think it would. And I mean, just something to point out about the way the zoning article is set up is what the procedure that it creates is it creates a a, a modified version of a site plan review. We can't require mm -hmm. a special permit, so it can't be our normal site plan review process, which does require a special permit. Right expedited simplified special permit that would be inserted into the zoning with as we said our aesthetic regulations to be you know decided by the cpc and kept on file okay so do you have a motion for us to uh recommend the zoning article alone? well not yet because actually so what i wanted to talk to you about was um if we do want, you know, as far as the zoning amendment, we have to schedule the public hearing, which I okay. think at this point now, because we can't meet the first Tuesday in May because of the election, looks like it would be May 18th. Um, so we can advertise for that. We did all of our public hearings, but we didn't do this one because we just were not far enough along with this all one. Right. But I can okay. say, you want to schedule it for May 18th then? Okay. Okay. So we'll do that. And then um, in terms of recommendation to the select board for the policy, I can just pass along to, you know, Vincenzo and, you know, Mike Gilberto that um, we're not really ready, ready to recommend the aesthetics policy yet. And that we would probably have to recommend that it take place, you know, either shortly before or shortly after town meeting. Okay. Okay. The, yeah. Cause I, that's what I was going to say. Give us at least at our next meeting, perhaps we would, we would have had an opportunity, all of us to really review that 
and, and, it, and provide you with comments if we felt it was necessary, or just at least under, know that we're all in favor of that we're okay, that we don't have any questions on it. Okay. That's basically what I was trying to do, buy a little time for us to put a little more time into reading. Right. Yeah. So, okay. so that's what I would like to do there. So, okay, so that's good. So May 18th, then we'll do the, uh, we'll do the zoning article, uh, public hearing, and, and we'll move, go from there. Great. Okay. Um, that's pretty much us, unless you got some specific you, planning. You got to continue a public hearing, Warren. For? Oh, Reading Lumber. Estes. Reading Lumber. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I, I kind of took that off my thing because I knew it had to be continued because I read it. Right, but yeah. we got to do it. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Let's uh, let's uh, make a motion to, uh, to continue the public hearing. Do you have that motion already? Or do we just need to make that? Um, I can read it. Let's just make that. Um, it's much easier when you should have just forwarded that to Ryan. He could have read it for you. You know what? Debbie just said, could you just put it in the share file? And I said, sure. Well, and then well, I hang on a forgot to now. do it. Hang on a minute now. First, I need to reopen that. I need to open that public hearing first. Right. So I'm going to open the public hearing for 110, 124 Main Street, Reading Lumber, special permit, floodplain, special permit. Okay. Now you can uh, make a motion. Okay. Um, I move that the CPC vote to uh, grant the requested continuance for 110 to 124 Main Street until April 20th, 2021 at 8 p.m. So move. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Redloff. So uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed, <clears throat> let the record show five in favor, no opposed. Uh, and they are uh, continued. So, okay, so do you have uh, planning administrator updates of any kind or? They're, they're mostly schedule related. Um, I just wanted to, you know, I did want to bring up the fact that we won't have a meeting on May 4th because of the election. I don't know if you want to do anything different as far as scheduling. Um, you know, I, I, I know. Let's next meeting and see what we got pending and then we'll look at that. Okay, sure. Now, one of the reasons I was asking because was because I know, as uh, Chris had brought up earlier, um, Bark and Roll had asked if we would we were going to be meeting any earlier than May 18th, if they wanted to do a site plan review. There's not much more time than that to advertise for that, though. So I don't know that moving a meeting date up would really do anyone any good. Um, so, okay, we can see how things are looking after the, you know, the April 20th meeting. Um, as far as that application, I didn't know if... I know that it was brought up earlier as far as what type of review. Did we decide that, that, that yes, it would be a site plan review or? I, I think, Warren, I think that was to you. Okay, oh, you, you well, whether we, whether the back and roll needed a site plan review? Yeah, and yeah. actually, I'm sorry, I realize not everyone was on at this point. Should I just explain? Yeah, please. Um, yeah. So yeah, so the, so bark and roll, which is at 211 Main Street, um, is uh, would like to purchase the property at 215 Main Street to expand the business. And um, it is now currently a hair or was a hair salon would be going to um, the, uh, you know, dog related, you know, having to do with grooming and boarding and um, various things related to caretaking of dogs. Um, and normally a change of use does trigger a site plan review. There are also some exterior changes like an exercise area and a fenced area. Um, at the same time, 211 did Main Street did not go through a site plan review at the time. Um, I don't really know why I think at the time it just wasn't sent to us because it wasn't on the previous building inspector's radar. So we just I think we just kind of didn't know. Um, but in both cases, they did have to go to the ZBA for, for, a, for a special use permit. So we wouldn't be deciding the use. It would be more a review of the physical changes and also any changes to parking, any changes to you know how the site was to be functioning. Um, so I just, you know, hours it's of operation, hours of operation, right, of course, things yeah. like that. So the question has been asked of me, does this require a site plan review? Um, I had initially told the applicant, yes, it does, um, you know, after Warren and I had, had spoken about it, um, but it, I just, I know Chris had brought it up and I didn't know if there was any further discussion about it. Well, it just, again, besides the fact that it's a change in use and the fact that an original site plan review wasn't done and was supposed to have been done, because the other dog places did have to go through site plan review. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I, it just seemed that this one should, that we should at least take a look. And the other thing is that the, um, in, in the other ones, you know, there was, there was questions, concerns about the noise, about the barking and how that was all, you know, what they had done to mitigate it. 
And I think those two sites are radically different as far as physical uh, barriers to the sound and, and everything is concerned. So um, I, it just seemed to me that we should, with that we, that in deference to the neighbors in that neighborhood, that we should uh, give them an opportunity to, uh, to know what's going on there and, and uh, not have suddenly have barking dogs right next door to them when they weren't there before. So uh, okay. it just seemed to me that we that that that's why I thought a site plan review would have been a good idea because we did it for the other ones, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, does anybody else? I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of which other ones you're talking about, Warren. The ones that were down by well, I don't think they're there anymore. I think the one that was down on Park Street there, which they they're not there anymore. I think. What the veterinary hospital? Where? Yeah, they were out behind it. Yeah. They they were they were there and then they came in because they they were doing something different I think, yeah. But they had always been there and then they came in because they they changed what they were doing I believe I'm not sure. Well, I mean, this this going from a hair salon to to a to a doggy daycare place that that's that's a change that's certainly a change. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not I'm not saying it's not a, I'm not saying it's not a change. Yeah. Uh, the, you know where they were the last time it was a change too, but um, what they are now. At, at and, they should have, and, and basically, everybody kind of agreed that even the building inspector they should have had a site plan review, when, when they did, but we have no idea why it didn't get done. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I you know, I just think that if we, it, you know, it can be a, a one a one meeting thing, you know. I mean, but but just so the the neighbors are notified <laughs> and, they, and we have a uh, um, so a chance just, to be transparent about what's happening. Right. The the the. To go to the zoning board to get the variance to have that in that location doesn't need a site plan review done ahead of time, right? It could be done after the fact. Is that correct? Well, as you know, as you well know, many times people have gone to the uh, zoning board of appeals ahead of coming to us and walked in saying we're allowed to do this even though we didn't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So obviously, the answer to that is yes. <laughs> We've been the victims of that many times in the past. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The use wouldn't be in question. It would be whether we wanted to put conditions that would make the use more palatable. So the use question will really be in front of the ZBA. So the change. That's right. We're not, we're not, we're not, yeah, yeah. Right. But we're not deciding whether or not it can be a doggy daycare. It just it just would be a question of like what the site would be looking like and how to mitigate in terms of hours of operation or anything hours else. Hours of operation like that. And, and, and noise. I mean, you know, I right. mean, again, <clears throat> are you familiar with the, with the existing one? Yeah, uh -huh. me? Yeah. At all? Yeah. Well, take a look. There, there, well, you know, if you... There's like a 15-foot wall behind them, and the dogs are down here and everything. Yeah. Spend, a, spend about a half hour there, and you'll see how much noise you can hear from that. Now take it over to the other one where there's no, not near as much physical barrier for the sound and see what, and see what you think. Okay. And there's a, that small building right next door has a parenting class thing in it. Which uh, building next door, left or right? Uh, yeah, Monadnock, used to be Monadnock Spring Water, where you get the water at the thing there. 25 yeah. cents fill the jug. Yeah. Yeah, they got a parenting class thing there. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, again, take a look. Now, at that, that was a change of use. They didn't come to us for that. Um, it, it's an um, office use, so and it was an well, office before, so yeah, it wasn't an office, it was, a, it was a water dispensing thing, right? Well, actually, it was two parts there was a real estate agent in there, then there was a travel agent in there, and uh, and actually, Kenneth Ivester Insurance was there 50 years ago. <laughs> well, that's 50 years ago, so well, I'm just saying, I, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just there's been an office use could, could rolling over and over and over, and it still is okay. But again, they have people in there, you know, parents and kids and all that stuff. And you're going to move that very close to them just across the driveway. So, I mean, I'm thinking about all the possibilities that are going on here and whether or not. Yeah, but you, you got to remember that you, you, you have noise between hard, two hard surfaces and it just reverberates also. Yeah. That's, yeah. That can always be a problem, right? Yeah. So how are they going to, what they're going to do there, how are they going to contain it, you know, what their, what their plan is, you know. To collect the two properties, you know, to give them a bigger yard because if they take on more dogs, they need more yard, and they mm -hmm. have a precious small yard now. Mm -hmm. 
Well, an outdoor enclosure for um, an exercise area was one thing that they had mentioned. Yeah, so that's one of the things you're going to want. I mean, there's, there's physical changes as well there. Right. Well, no, no. The physical changes is what it, is what's the big deal. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we just, I think, I think it's in fairness. I think we'd be, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't, if we didn't give them at least a basic site plan review. Something, you know, you, you know, it can be. You're relatively low key, but it's got to be something so that primarily so that we have the opportunity to let the neighbors know mm -hmm. and the abutters know that that's going to happen. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Any other comments on that? I mean, any, any, any other opinions? I mean, I, I don't, <clears throat> we are a board. We all, you all got to say. <laughs> <laughs> suggest that maybe in the future um, we consider looking at the site plan review criteria where something is going for a special use permit already to to the ZBA. I, I don't know whether we need to do a site plan review or not, but that's for the future. And I know that was added to the zoning back in, I don't know, 2012 or so, but I don't know. Sometimes I think it can slow things down, but it's just something I well, want to I don't really, there. I mean, if there, if I thought there was adequate notification, you know, of all, of the people around there that everybody, so that everybody knows what's happening. And, and um, but the Blue Board of Appeals hasn't traditionally um, looked at, they've kind of depended on us to tell them that everything's okay. And then they make their, their, their Board of Appeal decisions. Mm -hmm. Except for the ones, of course, that we, as we talked about, that go in ahead of us and, and, and before they come to us, so they can put it on and we can't deny them for it. You know, I mean, that's we wouldn't be able to deny the use. It would know, it would yeah, purely be conditions of you know of approval. But yeah, and and this meeting would be before their meeting, so whatever we approved would have would I mean it would rely on the ZBA then two days later issuing the, the special permit. So. But anyway, okay. Yeah. And of course, they may not. They may not issue it right away. They may hold it off. The they got what appeals? twenty days or something like that, right? Yeah. They yeah. might not issue it at all if they don't. I mean. That's like, correct. It's, it's that. That's correct, yeah. and uh, you, know, you know. The I, ZBA I know seems to get us, their. Uh, gonna, I know they're going to ask us what we think of it. I mean, they're going to send it to us anyway and say, right. "What do you think?" And we'll say, "Well, we we'll say, well, we have no idea what's going on," right? Yeah, because they'll just they'll get if we don't do it if we don't do something. What happens is they'll 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 get there. It'll go into the board of appeals. They'll send us a little notification. That says, oh, what do you think about this? With no pictures, no no, no <laughs> site plan, no. Of course they will. They're going to send that no to us anyway. Whatsoever. And since there isn't a plan, and they don't provide us with a plan, they won't have a plan. So there we are again. That's exactly. true. I don't think they would ask for a plan because the applicant wouldn't be concerned about the fact that she has to produce a plan if she already had to produce one for the ZBA. It would be the same plan. So you're yeah. right. But but is there a will? It, will but what the but the plan for the ZBA? What will it be? I mean, it'll just say this is what we're doing. I a mean, lot. It's um, going to be a right. lot of lot a plot plan. It That's all. should That's be it. a That's full. It. it should be a site plan. They do have you know requirements for submitting a site plan, but they don't they don't ask for them. So. Sure. They don't get. They don't write. They don't ask for them. So we don't. And because if they did, they give it to us, and we they never give it to us. So you see what I'm saying? I'm just concerned that there'll be a that you know we're going to get called down for missing a step. Okay. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And and I you know I mean we can keep it simple, but we really need to do it. Okay. All right. I will pass that along to the applicant. Yep. Um. Yeah. Okay. I think that was all that I had for my own updates. I will let you know as soon as I know the date for the select board meeting for the public hearings for warrant articles, um, okay. but I don't have it yet. Okay. Okay. Anybody got anything else they want to bring up on the new and old business or are we good? We're good. Okay. <laughs> and I guess we will uh, we'll close the meeting. But tonight, thank you all for coming tonight and spending your time here. Hopefully we'll 
make some progress on some things. Good night. Okay, nice. we'll see you later. Sleep tight. Yeah. Everybody go see Debbie tomorrow to oh, sign Chris, off some by plans. The, by the way, Chris, just so you'll... Uh, I'll send I mean, out a text. One of the things that they were asking is, what, what have we done for Concord Street? What has the town done for Concord Street? And I would like to... I didn't... I, I, I should have pointed this out. We did a lot for Concord Street, the planning board did, by changing it to the I.O. district, because before that, they had three or four more trucking companies than they have now. Oh, I know. And all those big trucks are coming down slowly but surely. We've eliminated a lot of that. Oh, so yeah. In the past years, we've we, this this board, anyway, has done something. Um, they, yeah, they, but they're not. that's not what they're looking at, Warren. The town has not gone in there and, and you know, changed worked on that street and made it better and you know the physical the physical street not the planning yeah. of the street not know, what I, you know i understand that and so it my, is my point my point here is that when they bought their house that was heavy and industrial oh i know okay I know. okay we've we've had this discussion with people before you buy yeah. a house in a heavy industrial district expect it that's right and then we put the io in there and got rid of the heavy and right. made it better, more cleaner, better uses. So we did. Yeah. Do, we we've done we've done good for that. Oh, I'm not saying we haven't. So, so and I just I yeah, know, I, just, I wasn't even I wasn't even looking at those the 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 neighbors right then. I was just you know just yeah. thinking of what that creep is going to be because I already know that the the way the uh, the horse farm was just all all up on uh, when they came to us that he was all you know happy to endorse them because if it's next to him, then he can just do the same thing, you know, and it just gets farther and farther. And, you know, as do you want that? This town has had accumulating any kind of commercial property, you know, it's, it's a little difficult to, to, just to, uh, yeah, well, we, we lose, we, we lose the stuff that could be, I thought could be much better, which would right along main street, especially when the sewer comes yeah. in. Yes. It would have been much more valuable, and that's where we've lost it all, except yes. for except for the uh, the Berry property. Yeah, and, you know, and heck, can you imagine if Bruce Wheeler had gotten the Berry property twenty years ago? What that would yeah. be now? You know, yeah. that would be a great mixed use community right now because he would have built right. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. he had already he had already taken learned. You know, from yeah, us on how to do things. Yeah, my with that, though, Chris. That that turns out to be that mixed use that he would have built would be sitting there half empty right now. See, one of the problems that 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 we're having with some of the projects that we're looking at, like the Abacus project and all that, in in the zoning that we have in that area now, where even if each one of those property owners individually decided to put something up that had uh, residential up top and, and, and retail down the bottom, which is what we require now with that overlay. Yeah. Um, the, those stores will be empty. They sit empty because all the other ones up there are empty. They can't rent them. There's no, there's, there aren't, that, that, that was a good idea uh, to maybe 10 years ago, but it's not panned out. I bet you if there were stores over, over in that area with the residents, now you've got your own population right away. Well, Problem is, is you, you, it's hard to change people's way of doing things. Yeah. They're in a car. I don't go towards Main Street. I go yeah. towards Middleton most times or yeah. Linfield. Yeah. It's the way it is. I'm on. I'm on the east side of town. Because you can go to one place and there are ten stores there, and you can. Yeah. But if you walk downstairs, you're gonna walk and use the stores that are right there. You don't have to get in your car. That's the difference. Yeah. That's well, the difference. Apparently, that, apparently that's not that has not been successful or as successful as they would hoped it would be in many of the places that they need the residential, but there's no takers for the stores. Yeah. No. So but who so knows? That's, that's coloring the way some people look at the projects that they're currently dealing with. Yeah. So, but they're still I mean, building, they're still building these huge buildings for them. They're still and they, building and that's the do. reason, though, that we that when they talked to the contractors, they were like, "Well, you know, you know," when, and with the abacus thing, that they just really didn't seem to be terribly interested in that as proposed. Now okay. you start adding more res, more and more residential. The more residential you add, you add, the more interested they get. Yeah. And you eliminate the stores, and now they're really interested. <laughs> 
So, but so I mean, you know, the whole concept that we're that we that we started out with is is for some reason or other not panning out in this particular time frame. So yeah. I don't know if it'll change in the future or get worse. I mean, you know, I mean, with the new, you know, which reminds me, Danielle, that the, that the new the new zoning laws that the state put out. Do we have to we have to incorporate those into our zoning bylaw? Do we have that? Um, do not we have yet. That? Um, so I had a preliminary discussion with town council about it. John Eichmann let me know that right now there's nothing for June um, that has to be done by that point. Um, yeah. It's he started to look at how our bylaws might need or how our zoning might need to have um, different wording based on the, um, uh, you know, the different numbers required for each type of vote. And he said that we actually had very little that would that he thought would need to change in our zoning. He and I are going to do a more thorough review of it. But a lot of these um, new provisions have to do with areas that are um, in in higher density right. developments in certain proximity to T stations. And, and when you look at all the actual criteria, we don't trigger many of them. We trigger some of them, but we don't trigger all of them. So yeah, he I actually thought- I talked for a little bit. We, talk, we talked about having it uh, doing in October because we weren't, we weren't, we weren't done yet. And yeah, I, but there- I something on that too, so. There's, yes, and there still might be very little for October because he really just didn't think that our setup was such that it, we actually triggered many of those. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did discuss with him um, the overlay for Park Street, and he said that it didn't meet the criteria for um, a simple majority vote, that it's still, his recommendation would be that it would still be a two-thirds vote. Yeah. Well, I think both of any of these zodic articles, even the Concord Street one's going to require a two-thirds vote. That one will, but yeah. housing articles now? Um, oh, yeah. yeah, they don't. Do are, yeah. But he didn't think that this one, because it was not a high enough density and it didn't meet the other criteria, he, still he, he said it's a gray vote. area, but his recommendation is that it's a two thirds vote still. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, yeah, because it's not big enough. Yeah. yeah. And some yeah. other things, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> Only the state could do stuff like this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if it's big, you can have it for half vote, but if it's small, you need a two thirds vote. Sounds like that's backwards to me, but that's that's the way it is. No, it's not about the size. It's about whether it meets smart growth criteria. So higher density near right. public transit and a few other things. Right, right. Put it in a different category. So. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, if that's it, then uh, we're all set. Um, and thank you. Thank well, again. Thanks you all for coming tonight, and hopefully we made some headway on some things. So. Have a good night. Good night, Thanks, everybody. Good night.